Hello and welcome back to my channel, Deku Fanfic. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the third part of our series, What If OFA Deku Loved Achako. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Fyam78910 from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. The Interludes 3. Interlude 1. What are they doing? Today we see Izuku and the rest of the boys from TDI at the Five Star Resort Izuku was getting a massage from a very sexy woman. But rather than flirting with then young man she was worried. Good lord for someone so young you have some serious scars. The Masu said. A combination of me getting bullied and apparently illegal hero work. Izuku said. Um are you Japanese by any chance? The Masus asked. I am and I'm currently looking into the RPA to see what I can do. Izuku said as he moaned as he relaxed. Good though I'm pretty sure that the hero school will be shut down. The Masu said. Izuku would have in any other time defended Yue but as he read the Robin Protection Act and thought about everything that Yue did. The first thing was the entrance exam I mean the robots could have killed people especially the Zero Pointers. Those things should have been in the arsenals of the Japanese Self-Defense Forces. The second thing is the USJ. As Izuku researched the RPA he found out two things one Universal Studios was still a thing and two they had tried to sue Yue multiple times. But always failed or settled out of court. Izuku suspects that the HPSC interfered. Numbers 3 and 4 was the UA Sports Festival and the internships. The UA Sports Festival was always compared to the Olympics of the pre-quirk era. There is just one little problem in that comparison the Olympics were still a thing or rather the Heroes Olympics where heroes from around the world would compete to honor their nations. Except for four nations with Japan being one of them. Another problem is that they illegally televised the festival. From what Izuku read it is illegal for hero schools to televise their school activities though it show the school's strength but it would also show villains the capabilities of the students, thus giving them an advantage. The internships that was a mess and a half had the RPA had been enforced it would have never been allowed a centimeter in Hasu let alone any hero working in Hasu. Finally the summer camp. It should have never happened they should just let the students go on vacations. And that was just the major issues there were still the minor ones. But all in all it would result in one thing UA shutting down. Izuku didn't want to accept it but it was going to occur whether Izuku wanted it or not. Though one question still bothered Izuku. How was UA not shut way earlier? Izuku mumbled. But oddly enough the Masus answered. Oh that's kid it was Star and Stripes. The Masus said. How huh, the number one hero of the USA? Izuku asked. Yup rumors have said that the US government hires pirates to quite on quite sack the US on days where the Neo One would inspect the country. Star and Stripes would use her quirk new order to stop all ships. Including the Neo One ships and were forced to turn back. The Masu said. Izuku's eyes widened as he listened to the Masu's that actually made sense but he knew that sooner or later Japan will change. While your massage is done I'd recommend that you visit the on-site hospital where you can heal your wounds and scars. My quirk metascanner is showing worrying amount of micro fractures especially around the arms and shins. The Masu said. Ha ah, he knows why and explains about the injuries he received and recovery girl hitting her shins. Ha ah, how old is she? The Masu's asked. I think she's in her 60s or 70s. Izuku said. The Masu's nodded and sent Izuku on his way. He went to the hospital a doctor rushed towards him took him to a room and used his quirk to heal him and it was a healing quirk like recovery girls but unlike her his quirk doesn't require a stamina payment. To make a long story short it healed his body and his bones. And by heal he meant they healed to their pre one for all state. As it turns out his shins also has micro fractures as well those are gone as well. He was probably gonna go to another doctor. After that happened Izuku told his mom what had happened she went to the doctor to speak to him. He then runs into DJ and Bunny who was playing with Uri and Dekaru in the pool. Yo Izuku you alright man. DJ said. Oh yeah I was thinking about what I'll do for school. Izuku said. So you realize that UA is gonna be shut down. DJ said. Izuku nods at DJ. That obvious height was my dream school. I've always dreamed of going there and I'm bummed out but after thinking about the blatant illegal things that had happened it surprises me how UA wasn't shut down years ago. Izuku said. Yeah but anyway how about we talk about something else. Like a certain girl you like. DJ said. I've made my choice about that. I'm gonna confess to Achako as soon as we return. Plus fucking ultra. Izuku said. Yeah Achako will be my mama. Harry said in cheer. Izuku blushed but was determined. Good for you man. DJ said. Thanks man, are you having fun Uri? Izuku said as Uri nods. Izuku decides to play with Uri for a bit after a while he decides to go check on Jeff and Duncan. He soon finds them leaving the sauna. Damn that felt great right Jeff? Duncan said with a grin. Yeah bro, oh Izuku how are you man? Jeff said as he waved. Hey Jeff, Duncan I'm just checking up on you. Izuku said. Oh whatever also your ideas work. Duncan said as he used his quirk to make a plasma sword. Jeff and Izuku were amazed by this. Awesome dude maybe I'll ask Izuku to make one for me. Jeff said. Just let me know okay. Izuku said as Jeff nods. So I heard on the grapevine that you're asking about UA and that you're going to confess to a certain doll faced girl. Duncan said. Yeah I'm not gonna lie I'm bummed out but I need to accept it. UA is going to be shut down. 
Izuku said as Jeff pats him on the back. Don't worry little dude you'll be a pro hero in a few years. Jeff said as Izuku nods. Thanks Jeff I'll need to check on Owen now. Izuku said as he leaves. But after a moment he turns around. Yeah I'm gonna confess to Achako as soon as we get back. Izuku said. Izuku leaves to go find Owen as Jeff and Duncan fist bump and smile. A few minutes later. Finding Owen was too easy he just finds him eating actual food. Owen looks at Izuku and smiles. Hey Izuku having fun here. Owen asked. Yeah I am and you. Izuku said. Doing great I'm enjoying the food. Owen said with a grin. I'm glad so anything had happened here. Izuku asked. Not much, just enjoying the food. How about you? Owen said. Just checking on the guys though it makes me wonder what happens with the girls. Izuku said. As Izuku thinks about this he goes back to his mom and thinks about how he would confess to Achako. Interlude 2. What are they doing? We see the girls at the island basically doing nothing. Well not really they and Chef are hiding in fear as Achako is tearing through the forest in rage. Which was not surprising considering Achako decides to study the RPA. This leads to Achako finding out about the government mandated stipends. The result was obvious. So anyone wants to calm her down. Heather asked. They gave her deadpan looks. Okay fair enough. But seriously what do we do? Heather said. Oh well, how about we sick chef at her? Lindsay said. The other girls looked at Lindsay and they face bombed. Okay a chef? Gwen asked. Alright I'll take care of it. Chef said as he tackles Achako. Both of them began to fight it was furious, chaotic and destructive. Damn and I thought I had anger issues. Eva said with wide eyes as Achako does a German suplex to Chef. Chef strikes back with a haymaker. Sooner or later however the fight ends. Both of them breathed heavily. So girl a draw. Chef asked. Yeah a draw. Achako said now calm down. Goth girl get hero girl some water now. Chef shouted as Gwen did just that. Bridget and Katie come up to Achako. Say Achako you okay. Katie said. Achako took a deep breath and sighs. Yeah I'm fine but I'm still pissed though. Achako said. I get it from what you told us about your life I don't blame you. Bridget said. Um yeah girl again we don't blame you. Leshana said. Thanks girls I needed that. Especially you chef thank you. Achako said. No problem girl you needed it. Chef said. How about we just get some drinks. Gwen said as she came back with a cup of water. Yeah I guess we should. Achako said as she drank the water. They decide to get drinks chef also decides that the girls deserve some real food maybe fried chicken today. With drinks and chicken with hand they had some fun. So Achako any idea when getting your man? Leshona asked. Achako smiled. When Izuku gets back. Achako said with a smile. The girls cheered her on. Even chef smiled as they ate. Interlude 3. What are they doing? We find ourselves in the UA dorms where Shoto Todoroki is throwing away a box. One side of the box said evidence that Izuku Midoriya is All Might's son. Stupid ass inheritance quirk all of my theories led to All Might being Izuku's father. It was all there. Shoto grumbled. At that instance Momo placed her hand on his Shoto's shoulder. It's okay Shoto to be honest your theory lines up extremely well. Momo said comforting Shoto. I know, I know it still sucks ass. Shoto said as he throws away the box. There, there Shoto how about I get some cold soba okay? Momo said. Thank you Momo. Shoto said. The both of them as they went back to the dorms. As they came back they saw that Mina, Siro, Denki, Hijiro were ignoring Bakugo. Ever since the revelation of Bakugo's behavior. The Baka squad has broken up leaving Bakugo isolated. Which is well deserved for what he had to Izuku. He had helped him get past his own barriers and it was thanks to him that he can use his fire. He's helped him in Ida during the stain incident. He is smart, helpful and a prime example of what being a hero is. Hello Mina how are you? Momo said. Ashido. Shoto said. Hey yeah Momo, Todoroki what you doing? Mina with a wiggle of her eyebrows. We're just throwing away my theories. Shoto said. Oh oof. Yeah I can't blame you for being bummed out. Mina said knowing that Shoto believed that All Might was Izuku's father. That was until All Might himself spilled the beans about one for all and all for one. It was a shit show and a half. Midoriya had this burden for over a year good lord this shouldn't have happened in the first place. Holy shit. Mina said with wide eyes. What's wrong Mina? Ijiro asked. Oh, I can now see why the RPA says that heroes school are to be unis. Mina said. Everyone mumbled about that. So what do we do when UA is shut down? Shoto said. No Shoto said when not if. As if UA shutting down was a certainty. Which might as well be. Well shit um I don't know man. Siro said. God I can't believe it this shit. Denki said. Hey Denki what's wrong? Mina asked. Well mom said I could be a pro hero if I can graduate collage. Denki said. That doesn't sound bad. Momo said. She wants me to work in an electrical plant which I don't want to. Denki said. Then don't. We don't know if we're being kicked out. Momo said as Denki nods. Thanks Momo. How about we talk about our cinnamon rolls? Denki asked. Yeah I hope they get together soon. Mina said with glee. I hope Achako is okay because of that brunch. Ijiro said. Please don't mention the word brunch in front of me. Momo said as she holds back her bile. I like Eri's hats. Momo make more hats. Siro said. I will Eri was so cute doing the thriller dance. Momo said gushing at Eri's cuteness. Soon they began talking about Total Drama Island. Soon the rest of class 1 arrives. And Bakugo left as the group got bigger. But then the next episode beings to start. Chapter 16. 
No pain, no game. Last time on Total Drama Island, the base and gopher teams were disbanded into a battle of the sexes challenge that put their taste buds to the puke test. With bovine testicles, live bug insect pizza, and liquid roach juice on the menu, not only was this the biggest wretch fest this host has ever seen, but Owen Obscene Appetite paid off and scored a big win for his compards. Chris said, Really, dude? Daniel said with an annoyed look. Chris gave him a flat look. You're lucky that I can't fire you. Chris said. After fixing his hair for a bit, he continues. Anyway, while the guys set sails on a weekend retreat aboard the SS Lapo Luxury, the girls would have set up territories if Achako didn't mention the other room. That was right next door. I mean seriously there was an empty room next door. Anyway you'll have to find that out on the most exciting episode yet on. Chris said as he does the last part of the intro. Total. Drama. Island. We find the girls relaxing at the campgrounds but the situation is tense. Heather and Lindsay were reading magazines. Lashana was loudly eating chips. Achako practiced her martial arts with Eva. Katie was fixing her hair while Gwen wrote on her dairy and Bridget maintained her surfboard. There was an aura of mistrust between the Heather and Achako factions. The factions made after the brunch ended. All of them were silent until a fly flew to Heather's nose. But just as Heather was about to kill it, Lindsay hits Heather with her magazine. Oh oops, sorry, Lindsay said. Lindsay, you are a total. Heather said as a loud boat horn cut her off. Heather covered her mouth, but then saw that the SS Lapo Luxury returned to Camp Wawanaqua. The four boys dancing along the while Izuku, Inko and Iri were waiting to get off the boat. Some of the girls were pissed except Achako who saw Izuku again. Oh, sweet mother of mirth. You can't buy that kind of fun. Owen said with a smile on his face. I think Owen and DJ took a real shine to those lovely ladies who served us hand and foot. Duncan said with a grin of his own. Hello. The spa treatments. My alligator elbows, totally gone. DJ said as he showed off his elbows. Ooh, like velvet. Owen said as he felt the brick house's elbows. Unsurprisingly this pissed off Leshana greatly. Confessional booth. BSSH. Those should have been my alligator elbows getting the hand and foot treatment. Lashana angrily said. I had a lot of fun over there. I feel very pretty, Eri said with a smile. Eri rushed up to the girls and offered them some candy. They reluctantly accept them as to not to make Eri cry. Izuku walks up to Achako and hugs her. Achako notices Izuku's lack of scars. Izuku, your scars. Achako said, surprised to not see Izuku's scars. Oh, there was a doctor that healed me without the stamina costs. Izuku said, Wow, that's good, Izuku, so are your bones okay now? Achako said as Izuku nods. Yeah, in fact they restored to the point that I got my quirk. Oh, I also might sue recovery girl. Izuku said. Oh, why? Achako asked dumbfounded at his declaration. It turns out there were a lot of micro fractures on my shins and skull. Izuku said. Achako was getting mad but Izuku hugs her causing her to blush. I brought a lot of snacks for us. Izuku said showing Achako a bunch of snacks. Achako grins. But then Chris ruins the moment. Listen now, as of right now, all teams are officially dissolved. From here on in, it's every camper for themselves. Chris said from a speaker. Oh ho ho, I'm feeling that. Bring it on, Chris. Leshana said ready to take on any challenge. Then get ready for this. Chris announced as a boat horn sounds. Everyone looked at the oncoming boat with wide eyes. What? But that's impossible. Heather said with wide eyes as Lindsay pinches her. Nanny but how? Izuku shouted. To be fair I thought he died. Gwen said surprised. That makes two of us goth girl. Duncan said. Back by popular audience demand, it's Cody. Chris said as the boat transports a fully healed Cody. Hey guys I'm back. Cody said as he got off the boat. Okay I know for a fact that he was medevaced. Achako said. Well I got better. Cody said. Hold the fuck up. You said no one is allowed back. Gwen said. I did. Chris asked. Yeah and I quote. And once you leave, on the dock of shame and on the boat of losers, you can never, ever, ever, ever come back. End quote. Gwen said. Oh yeah, that. Yeah I lied and it's not the only thing I lied about. Chris said. Gwen was about to argue with him but then remembers that this is Chris McLean. Asshole extraordinaire. So she stops herself. Hold up you said that this isn't the only thing you lied about. Heather said. Yup but also returning to camp. It's Izzy. Chris said as the wild girl appears. As she swings on a vine like Tarzan. She lets go and lands on her feet. Hey guys. It's good to be back at camp even thought I never actually left island. I've been living in the woods all this time. Izzy said as she scratches her head with her leg. Izzy explains about her life in the woods. She speaks of storms, beavers, foraging and wanting a bag of nachos. Before anyone else was gonna say anything Chris spoke once more. All right, campers. Report to the amphitheater where you'll about this week's challenge. McLean out. Chris said as they went to the amphitheater. Achako and Izuku lagged behind. I'll tell you later Achako okay. Izuku said as Achako nods. Duncan was trying to tell Owen that it was every camper for themselves but Owen scoffed it off. Dude I know for a fact that we're going to make a guy's alliance since the girls outnumber us 9 to 6. Owen said. Duncan opened his mouth but then closed it after realizing that Owen was right. 
Yeah, we need all the voting power we can get since there are no more leaders. Owen said, needing no more double votes. Fine, I'll call the other guys. Duncan said as he nodded as he realizes that the double votes are gone. Yeah, at least we can get it to 8 to 7. Owen said. Duncan was confused by this at first but then his eyes went wide. Super dork and Dolly woman. Duncan said as realized once Izuku confessed to Achako they would have been in on the girls. Yup, call the guys after the challenge. Owen said. A few minutes later, we find ourselves at the amphitheater where all the campers are seated. Welcome to the next challenge. This time we will be playing the time-honored game of Torture Say on the Sea. Chris announced as he shows off a big wheel with various pictures on it. Here he was with them wearing a capitaine hat. Except this one had a skull on it instead of a belt buckle. Izuku saw this and wondered. Izuku thought, You're all about to be put through the test of endurance so insane that some of them sent some of our interns to the emergency room. If you back down or don't last the required 10 seconds you will be eliminated. Chris said as the campers gasp. This time Chris grins. Now before I tell you about today's prize I'd like to point out that the teams are dissolved and I know most of you noticed a very noticeable lack of power. Voting power to be precise. Chris said as Heather's eyes went wide. Confessional booth. Holy shit Izuku isn't a leader anymore meaning his power is cut in half. Heather said with a demonic grin. Which is why I'm presenting this beauty of 5 kilos. Chris said as he holds up a giant platinum trophy with the letters TDI on it. The campers looked at the trophy in awe. This is the platinum camper it goes to the best camper of the week it doesn't come with cash prize like the platinum base or gopher. But whoever wins it gets triple voting power. Chris said. Hold up. I'm sorry but did you say triple voting power? Leshana said with wide eyes. Yes I did oh and it come with 25 assorted imported chocolates. Chris said with a smile. Then Chris loses that smile. But we also have this. Chris said as he shows an old graham cracker. A graham cracker dude. Jeff said. Yes the graham cracker of disappointment. This goes to the least accomplished camper every week. Whoever gets this and trust me you do not want this. It's no voting power. Chris said with a smile that would make even Freddy Krueger flinch in fear. This shocks the campers. First an award with triple voting power followed by something that takes away your voting power. Chris means business and thanks to this means the battle for the grand prize had just gotten harder. Confessional booth. Oh sweet mother of fuck. This is serious. I need that platinum award. Heather said. Well shit Chris just turned the difficulty up to max. Gwen said. I love my new boss. Chris said with a genuine smile. Now for the second thing I lied about. The prize money it is not a $100,000 USD but it's $5 million. Chris said. This surprised the campers Chris lied about the grand prize. This will make the fight for first place even more intense. Now then for this week's prize. Immunity to elimination and a luxury trailer. Yours to take home at the end of the summer. Chris said as he shows off the trailer. So what kinds of torture? Leshana said. Why don't you ask my lovely assistants? Chris said. Harry and Chef were waiting for them. With the ladder holding a cleaver. All right let's do this. Duncan you're up first. Chris said. Fuck I'm dead. Duncan said as he got up. Now let's spin the wheel of misfortune to select your torture. Chris said as he spun the wheel. The wheel kept spinning until it stopped at the picture of a turtle. Turtle puck shots. Our intern spent weeks collecting the grumpiest, angriest, crustiest and hungriest old snapping turtles on the island. While you stand in the goalie net completely unprotected, chef will fire turtle slap shots. Chris said as Duncan gulps. The campers gasp at the sight of the turtles. If I were you dude, I'd protect my balls. This could get ugly. Chris said with a smirk. A few minutes later. Now Duncan was now standing with a goal behind him. He was looking very nervous. If you can stay in for 10 seconds, you'll go on to the second round. Chris said as a buzzer sounded off. Immediately Chef began shooting. Duncan dodged the first one but the second one bit him in the shoulder. Chef shot more turtles at Duncan hitting him but he manages hang on for the 10 seconds even after one of the turtles bit Duncan balls. And Duncan moves on to the next round. Isn't this fun? Chris announced with a smile that looked like he was having too much fun. Yeah, it's a fucking riot. Duncan sarcastically grumbled as he glared at Chris. Confessional booth. Damn that's harsh dude no one should get hit in the nads not even Duncan. Cody said. Next up, Lindsay. Your torture is marshmallow waxing. Chris said a chef carts in a pot of boiling marshmallow goop. Oh lord. Achako said paling at the sight of it. We're gonna wax every part of your body. If you can take the pain for 10 seconds, you can go to the next level. Chris said as Lindsay fierce turns into excitement. Oh god, I so need this. I've been dealing with razor stubble for weeks. Try not to wax off my tan, K. Okay. Lindsay said. Chef poured the marshmallow wax on Lindsay's skin. Surprisingly she took it like a champ and after 10 seconds Chef peels it off. Taking all of the razor stubble with it. Oh my god I thought marshmallow were only good as an empty calorie snack. I am so going to use marshmallow wax from now on. Lindsay said as she felt her baby skin face. Well done, Lindsay. Since you didn't even complain once, you get to choose who goes next. 
Chris said. Lindsay looks at Heather who nods. I chose Achaco with lake leeches. Lindsay said. Chef then carries a barrel of lake leeches and drops it down. Achaco was about to go but Izuku stops her. Izuku. Achaco asked. I'll go in her stead. Izuku said. The girls coo at how romantic he was. Except for Heather who was seething. Izuku entered the barrel and stayed there for the ten seconds needed. After that happens he comes out a bit paler than usual. Well done Izuku you're off to the next round. Chris said. Izuku goes back to his seat but not before smiling at Achako. Lindsay since Izuku won you have to go to the pillory. Chris said. Pillory? Lindsay said as she restrained on a pillory. Chris spins the wheel again until it reaches a picture of a pair of shorts. Owen you're next. Chris said. After a bit we see Owen wearing a pair of wooden shorts. Wooden shorts big deal. Owen said mocking the shorts. Chef pulled out a stick with a woodpecker on it. Upon seeing it Owen had one thing to say. I've really got stop summoning Murphy. Owen said as he covers his balls. After that was done we see Gwen getting her nose hairs getting pulled out. Next we see DJ getting crushed by Snake only to recognize it as the same snake trying to eat Bunny. Which caused DJ to kick its ass and allowing him to go to round 2. Finally we see Heather with a shirt of bees on her. Our next challenge will be spending 10 seconds in a wooden crate with Sasquatch and Equa. Tough one Heather you haven't complained in a while so you can choose the next victim. Chris said. The choice is simple Eva. Heather said. Confessional booth. Eva's hardcore I was thinking she could actually pull this off. Leshana said. Hopefully Eva makes it out alive so she can beat the shit out of Heather. Cause she'll be so pissed when she does. Gwen said. Eva enters the wooden crate with the Sasquatchanequa. Once that happens the crate starts to shake violently this however lasts for 10 seconds. Soon Eva come out wearing a purple hat and a pair of purple boats. Along with a purple coat a few sizes too small for her. Here you go Ari. Eva said as she gives Ari the coat. Thank you Miss Eva. Ari said as Eva went back to her seat. Eva stuck it out so that means Heather is out of the game. Chris said as Heather is now stuck in a pillory. Fuck you damned bitch. Heather said angrily. Now then let's see who showed the least courage than Eva and cried uncle. Chris said with a smile. Multiple people cried uncle. First was Jeff who got skunked. Aw oh, damn it not again. Jeff said as he covers his nose. Followed by Gwen who couldn't take the new age music. Fuck you Chris. Gwen said. Owen received the biggest brain freeze in history. G-G-G-A-A-H-H-H. Owen screamed in pain until he tripped and fell on his face. Katie was about to receive a haircut via chainsaw. Nope, 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 nope. Katie said as she ran all while saying nope over and over again. That was until she ran into the arms of Cody. He blushed for a bit before hugging her back. Confessional booth. First day back and I'm hugging a girl. My luck must be turning around. Cody said. Oh god I cannot believe I did that. Katie said as she blushed. Izzy was up next with eel shock therapy only to not just want to do it again but she did the next dare on herself causing her to lose. Oh no I think Izzy should be in one of those rapper jackets. Harry said who is wearing her new coat. Yep now then time to spin the wheel. Chris said as he spins the wheel until it stops at a picture of two people. One of them is firing a laser while the other was talking. The resisting of the truth. Izuku for this round you'll need to resist telling the truth while being fired by a truth rate quirk. Courtesy of one of my many interns. Chris said as said intern nervously waved at him. You sure I can do this Chris? The intern asked as Chris nods. Izuku was about to stand up but Achako stopped him. Not this time Izuku I'm going. Achako said. You sure Achako-chan? Izuku said as Achako nods. Achako stands in front of the intern who looks at her. Achako nods. Just before the intern fired Jeff pushed Izuku closer to Achako. Achako notices Izuku right behind her and turns around to see Jeff smiling at them. Just as she was about to speak Achako was zapped by the intern. Izuku was getting up as he sees Achako glowing. Izuku. Achako calmly said. Oh yes Achako. Izuku said. You are the smartest, dumbest, hardworking boy I have ever met. When I first saw you I thought you just this oddball of a boy. Achako said. Izuku couldn't help but blush at that as he remembered the first time he met Achako. In fact now thinking about it he never did talk to her. But as I got to know you. The kind, earnest, generous boy no man that graced the tiny blue marble we call home. Achako said. Izuku's blush became even brighter as the intern stopped his quirk. As I heard about your dreams and goals in life I thought back then that I wouldn't distract from your dreams. If I had a time travel quirk rather than zero gravity I would have slapped my past self silly for spouting such nonsense. Achako said. Izuku thought. I've seen you at your bravest and your foolish. Achako said. Izuku remembers the fight against Shoto and his clash with Stain. I've seen you be both a guiding light and a pillar of strength. Achako said. Izuku remembers the USJ and his fight against Muscular. I've seen you being the greatest friend and the greatest father to Iri and Koda. Achako said. Izuku remembers his class and the two kids he befriended. Achako's look became somber. I've also seen you at your lowest. Achako said. Izuku knows that she meant phobia factor but he can't help but remembers the dark times he had suffered. His quirkless diagnosis, his Hisashi leaving him, All Might saying no and Bakugo telling to kill himself. Izuku beings to tear up. 
But I also want you to remember the greatest moments, Achako said as she smiles. Getting into UA, receiving one for all, hearing All Might saying he can be a hero, getting his provisional license, and finally meeting the love of his life. Acha-chan I want to add this moment as well. Your Raka Achako will you be my girlfriend? Izuku said not asked said. Kiss me a fool. Achako said as Izuku did just that. The both of them were ignorant of the many cheers the other campers gave. Because it was just them. But like always Chris ruined the moment. Well two things. Finally. Also you lost Achako the game but you gained a greater prize. Chris said with a smirk. Chris I quit as well. Eva. Leshana may the best girl win cause I'll be busy getting to know my woman. Izuku said with a grin. Unknown to Izuku the vestiges of OFA were throwing a party to celebrate the good time to come. Izuku carries Achako bridal style rushes to the cabin giggling along the way. Well then that happened. Lashana, Eva time for a sudden death match. Chris said. A few hours later. Achako and Izuku were now cuddling in bed and before you ask no they didn't do the deed dot 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 yet. The both of them were dreaming when they hear a knock on the door. Soon they to wake up and they open the door revealing Daniel. Hey guys the challenge is over Lashana won. It's time to cast your votes oh Izuku Chris told me to give you this. Daniel said as he hands Izuku his platinum camper. Thank you. We'll vote and head to the ceremony. Izuku said as both he and Achako nod. Izuku and Achako casted their votes and headed towards the campfire. Campfire ceremony. Okay so first off we ran out of marshmallows. Chris said as Owen did a Darth Vader style in NNOO. Chris rolled his eyes at this. Second of all the Izuacha ship has been launched. Chris said. This caused the campers to cheer. Is the cinnamon rolls blush. I reviewed the voted and besides six votes going to Heather and Izzy having no voting power the rest went to one of the strongest players. And that player is. Chris said as dramatic music plays. The other campers were silent but they all knew who it was. Eva sorry to say but you're out. Chris said. Ugh fine I guess this is my end. Eva said. Hi oh, you're taking it a lot better than I thought. Chris said with a raised eyebrow. After phobia factor I've learned to take a lost a lot better. Eva said as she takes her leave. Soon Eva leaves the island waving goodbye to her friends. After Eva leaves Izzy suggests a party in Leshana's trailer. They do and Izuku and Achako join in as well. They wonder how their class would react. Chapter 17 Aftermath Izuacha Izuacha Reaction UA Today we don't find ourselves at Total Drama Island but in UA High, where the two hero classes, Mei, Hitoshi, Melissa and the teachers were watching the show. But when the confession happened, Mina and Toru were silent as Mina got up and went to her and came back with a box. She opened the box and it revealed a pair of headphones and two long tubes with aux cable inserts. Toru hold Kyo-chan down. Mina said as Toru holds Gyro down as Mina inserts the tubes and places on the headphones on her ears. Okay done. Mina said as she snaps her fingers at Kayoka. What the hell is this and why I can't hear your snapping? Kayoka said as she can clearly see Mina snapping fingers. Okay good Toru. Mina said. Yup. Okay girls it has happened. Toru said with glee. Girls commenced the squeals. With that in mind the girls squealed. And it was so loud that everyone else covered their ears. It has happened. Mina shouted. Izuacha 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 Izuacha. Toru said with glee. This is so awesome. Setsuna said. Unhappy for Midoriya-san and your chan Itsuka said with a smile. Ugh at least they warned me about the squealing. Jairo said as she takes off the hearing protection. Yes I won the pool. Tashinori shouted as the rest of the teachers gave Tashinori money. Hold up your betting money. Ida shouted as she swung his arms up and down. Oh please. We do this all the time. Hizashi said. Yeah. Yeah you're just smug for last year when you guessed correctly about the big three being Polly. Narumi said as she pouts. Hold up the big three are Polly. Mina asked. Mina will deal with that later. For now Izuacha. Toru said. Oh right anyway we should celebrate the union. Mina said with a smile. Now what do you think Mei? Suyu said. Oh don't worry. We'll get to green along with gravity girl. Mei said. Suyu and Mei nodded as they bumped fists. Ah guys Leshana won and Eva was eliminated. Denki said as he sees the campfire ceremony. Yeah, yeah whatever Kaminari. Mina said dismissing him. I'm okay so I'm going to check the forum dot 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 holy shit Izuacha is already trending. Denki shouted as everyone looks at the forum. Oh my it looks like a lot of people are liking this. Momo said as she sees a lot of positive comments. MMM. It looks like there are some trolls as well. Yui said as she saw some negative comments only to be buried by other positive comments. Ah who's the creator of the blog? Kinoko said. Someone named Cody Lover 69 Denki said. Well looks like Cody has a fan. Mina said. Yeah a crazy one. Setsuna said with an eye roll. As the students discuss about the confession. The teachers on the other hand were discussing about if it will interfere with their future heroics. This is just so cute. Narumi said with glee. I don't think should be together while working. Aizawa said. You know I'm starting to see why the RPA prohibits underground heroes from being teachers. Kan said in a flat tone. Aizawa, Narumi and Hizashi groaned. This is one of the major things that the RPA was trying to prevent. They had made studies about underground hero educators. These studies had shown that they have extreme standards mostly due to personal tragedies to prevent further death. 
the results of those who worked under these heroes become underground heroes themselves, resign from their hero academia or in the worst case scenario become villains or commit suicide. Don't remind us, the three of them said, at least I can have Hitoshi as an apprentice. Aizawa said, that's fair but what will we do now? Ken asked, they knew that UA will be closed by Neo on at least until they can get their jobs back. Yeah at least I have my radio show. Hazashi said, I'll need a place to work think you can spot me. Narumi said, at least I can work as an accountant until I can get my license back. Aizawa said, still I wonder how everyone else would react. Haragi said, especially other pro heroes. Tashinori said, or villains. Nezu said causing the teachers to go silent. Nezu was right what would the villains do now that the world knows that Izuku and Achako are a couple. Izuacha reaction villains. Somewhere in Japan we find a group of villains watching TV. But these weren't ordinary villains. These were the League of Villains. Tamura Shigaraki, Dabai, Himiko Toga, Twice, Spinner and Mr. Compress. Tamura is a slim man with pale skin, tinged yellow teeth, and a great deal of wrinkles around his eyes. His lips are chapped and uneven, a small mole on the right underneath, with visible scars on his right eye and under his lip. He has messy, long, grayish-blue hair of varying lengths, the longest clumps reaching to about his shoulders, left hanging over his face in uneven waves. His eyes and mouth are normally obscured, but when visible, they are usually stretched wide in a rather maniacal manner, their bright red irises very small. After all, for one's arrest he wears a hooded leather coat that he wears over his costume. He also added two additional red cords to connect the hands on his shoulders to the hands on his chest. Dabai is a reasonably tall, pale young man of slim shape but somewhat muscular build, described as in his early twenties. He has white hair with a few red flecks at its crown that spikes upward around his head, hanging low over his eyes, which are thin, turquoise, and heavily lidded. Dabai's hair was dyed black before revealing his true identity. His most striking features are undoubtedly the patches of gnarled, wrinkled, purple skin that cover much of his lower face and neck, all the way down past his collarbone, below his eyes, around his torso, and on his arms and legs due to him losing control of his fire quirk at age 13, engulfing him in flames. These appear to be attached to the rest of his skin by multiple crude surgical staples or hoop piercings. He has several silver cartilage piercings in both ears and a triple nostril piercing on the right side of his nose. Upon closer inspection, he also lacks earlobes on both sides of his ears. He wears a dark blue jacket with a high, ripped collar, matching pants cut off above his ankles, and a pair of dark dress shoes on his feet. He also has a plain pale gray, scoop neck shirt, below which a gray belt with a circular pattern wraps around his waist, a leather satchel attached at the back. Emiko is a relatively petite, fair-skinned girl who is prone to blushing and is frequently described as having a pretty face. She has slightly inward-tilting bright yellow eyes with thin slits, somewhat resembling those of a cat, and her wide mouth is also rather feline, as both her upper and lower canines are more pointed and longer than the rest of her teeth, giving her a vampiric appearance. Her hair is a pale, dirty ash-blonde color and is styled into two messy buns, with numerous wild strands sticking out at all angles from their centers and where they're fastened, a straight fringe and two chin-length side bangs to frame her face. Her casual outfit consists of a plain seifuku with a kansai collar, both the skirt and the shirt dark blue with a double white trim, which is paired with a red scarf that she ties loosely below. Over this, she wears an oversized beige cardigan with a rather long hem and cuffs, and pockets on either side, the right one shown to hold a number of trinkets on either a keychain or a cell phone strap. She sports knee-length black socks and dark brown dress shoes with thick heels, the same as the outdoor uniform shoes students traditionally wear in Japanese schools. In her villain attire, she wears the same outfit but with a few additional gadgets and pieces, such as her pipe black mask, the boxes of knives strapped around her thighs, and a blue utility belt around her waist with more little green boxes attached to it on either side. The most noticeable new feature is the loose black mask she wears around her neck, which is decorated with pieces of pale gray metal in the shape of a carnivorous grin. Three large silver canisters are attached to the sides of her mask, with needles poking out of their tips and wires on their bases, which connect them to the two larger cylinders strapped to the back of her belt. This whole mechanism is used to suck people's blood for Himiko to use with her quirk. Mr. Compress is a tall, slim man with pale skin and brown eyes that are semicircular and slightly slanted inwards, and he has a notably pointed nose. He wears a combination of a mask, balaclava, and hat. Underneath his mask reveals that he has short black eyebrows and a head of curly brown hair of similar shade to his eyes. In his villain attire, he wears a dark orange shirt, the collar left upturned, and a green striped bolo necktie with an oval-shaped azure brooch hanging around his neck, a black waistcoat, and black dress pants. He wears knee-high white boots with wedge heels and black toe caps, plain dark red gloves and a tall brown top hat, a red ribbon tied around it and a pale feather sticking out on the left side. Over his head, he wears a black balaclava with a hole for his mouth as well as his eyes, over which he wears one of multiple white masks he owns, each with a different black geometric design. In his first appearance, he also wears a dark yellow, double-breasted overcoat with button shoulder tabs and a high collar, which reaches below his knees, and he additionally carries a silver walking stick with a gold handle. 
Spinner is a young man with a reptile-like appearance, with bright green scales for skin and a face shaped like that of a lizard. His hair is relatively long and swept backward and is a desaturated pinkish-purple in color, standing out from the rest of his colors. In reflection of his great admiration towards Stain, Spinner wears clothes similar to his, a sleeveless shirt and dark, baggy pants, along with black shoes and pale, metallic knee guards. He wears a mask made of a long, tattered strip of cloth, the same as the one worn by Stain, a red scarf and bandages wrapped around both his arms, partially covered by black wristbands and plain black boots. He wears goggles on his forehead, and also carried an enormous sword on his back that was made out of many smaller blades bound together until it was destroyed. Twice was a rather well-built man, with blonde hair and gray-blue eyes. He had a large scar splitting his forehead from an incident in his past. He had visible traces of facial hair over his mouth and at the bottom of his chin. His civilian attire consisted of a blue-collared shirt over a white tank top along with a normal pair of pants and boots. His villain costume was a black and gray bodysuit that covered his body completely, along with gray boots. The upper half of his signature mask was gray with white eye sockets while the lower half covering his mouth was black. Twice also sported red and green wristbands that he stored his measuring tapes in. The majority of Twice's suit was black other than the section over his lower legs and the gray designs that appear to form a T and W over his chest. The T is formed by a horizontal line crossing his upper torso and a vertical line ascending from the abdomen. Another line snakes down to his lower torso and splits down to his thighs, which then ascends to his hips forming a W. Oh well damn, go your raka, dab I said with a raised eyebrow. This is so cute, they won't last long. Twice said, my, my this is quite beautiful. Mr. Compress said, I think he deserves more girls and happiness. Spinner said, hey, I agree with you Spinner. Tamura said, yeah my two favorite people are together now I hope I can join them and make love to them all while covered within that monster's blood. Emiko said with a blush and a faint grin. The other villains were creeped out about that, but they have a good idea on what Toga's saying. Okay I assume you want a blood orgy with those hero brats all while bathing in Bakugo's blood. Dab I said knowing the answer, yep he deserves to die. Himiko said with no hesitation. At least Tamira isn't destroying the TV like the last time. Mr. Compress said, the last time being Phobia Factor, which pissed Tamira off because he believed he could have turned Izuku into a villain. He ranted about that for days, especially when he learned that it was All Might that shattered his dreams. Tamira grumbled as he reminded himself about missing out at the secret recruit with an S-rank analysis ability. Okay then I want to give an absolute order, Tamira said as everyone looked at Tamira. Tamira took a deep breath. No one touches your Raka for if she dies Izuku will either kill himself or destroy with a fury of a thousand suns. Tamura said, and if he gets a polycule. Spinner said remembering Justin's confessional. The same order goes to them as well. Tamura said, everyone nodded at that. Say Tamura how much would a plane ticket to Canada cost? Emiko asked, this raises an eyebrow at this question. I'll ask Juran about it and I'll tell you later. Tamura said as Himiko swoons. Soon she will see her favorite people again. Tamura sighs as Himiko goes into her room with a skip on her step. Okay then let's see how do we can get our new elite unit. Tamura said, unknown to Tamura this will be the first step to becoming the greatest villain of the world. Even greater than all for one. Meanwhile at Camp Wawanakwa. Oh what was that? Izuku said as he looks around. Izuku shut up and make out with me. Achako said. Izuku shrugs and goes back to making out with Achako. God he loves his girlfriend and he'll enjoy every moment of it. Chapter 18. Search and do not destroy. We find Chris once again at the dock of shame ready to make the intro. Last time on Total Drama Island. The teams were dissolved leaving each and every camper to look out for number one and to add some more drama to the mix we brought back Cody and Izzy for some extra fun. We also raised the stakes with the Platinum Camper Award along with the Graham Cracker of Disappointment and raised the prize money from $100,000 to $5 million. Chris said with a grin, You're loving every single moment of this aren't you big guy? Daniel said, Chris who was in a good mood smiled. The campers were made to suffer abuse after abuse in this no-pain, no-game challenge. Izuku did the heroic thing and saved Achako from the lake leeches. In an awesome display of log rolling Leshana won the challenge but more importantly Izuku Midoriya and Achako Yuraka finally got together. And in this host's humble bragging opinion, it's about fucking time, Chris said as he shouted the last part. Hell yeah I still can't believe you won the bet boss. Daniel said, I still have to give 80% of the winning to them but who cares. Chris said with a big smile on his face. Okay okay big guy back to the show. Daniel said as he chuckled. As did Chris. Now that the campers are forced to fend for themselves who will selfless, who will be selfish and who will eat shellfish. Chris said knowing that he will do the last one. Not me that's for sure. Daniel mumbled as he made his disdain for seafood known. Stay tuned for the most thrilling episode yet of on. Chris said as he does the last part of the intro. Total. Drama. Island. It was another day in Camp Wawanakwa the sun was beginning to rise as we see Leshana coming out of her new trailer her eyes a bit baggy after the party last night. Damn there was a good party last night, Leshana said as she yawns and scratches her ass. With Izuku and Achako, we find ourselves at the lake where Izuku swam in it, despite having man-eating sharks in it. Confessional booth. 
we see a shark in the confessional booth, wearing green and pink banners and the like. Turns out that they support Izuacha as well. We see Achako waiting for Izuku as he comes out of the water showing off his body now free of scars. Achako couldn't help but blush at the sight of his scar-free body. Confessional booth. Okay, despite me making out with Izuku yesterday, I still blush at his presence, and I'm sure Izuku does the same with me. Achako said with a blush. I'm sure if Achako was here, she would have said something similar. God, I love that woman. Izuku said. I think Achako is nice. Maybe she and that nice frog lady can share him. Then I would have two mamas. Harry said with glee. But like all good things, they have to come to an end. As Chris, who's dressed in a pirate outfit, fires a cannon hitting a nearby tree, which was near Leshana's trailer. Oh god damn it, Chris. Leshana said. The army mateys meet me at the amphitheater in five minutes and I'll tell you about today's challenge. Chris said in a pirate accent. Izuku and Achako sighed at this. Well, it was fun while it lasted, Izukun. Achako said. Yeah, let's go, Ochan. Izuku said. The both of them left for the amphitheater. Five minutes later. Amphitheater. Everyone is at the amphitheater waiting for Chris to tell them about the challenge along with Chef and Eri who are wearing pirate hats. At that moment Chris begins to speak. Well my little scallywags have we got an adventure in store for ye. Chris said as the parrot on his shoulder falls down but he fixes it up. What's under the sheet bro? Jeff asked. All in good time laddie. Who here has a hankering for a good old fashioned treasure hunt? Chris said as he starts to cough. He knew what was causing it so he pouted as he rubbed his throat. Oh god damn it. All right, all right you win doc no more pirate voice. Chris said as he used his normal voice. Told you so. Me said with a smirk. Anyway this treasure hunt has a twist. Rather than doing the whole treasure map and riddle stuff you'll be looking for the keys for said chests. Chris said as chef takes the sheet off of the multiple chests that lay underneath. They looked at the chests with glee in their eyes. Inside of these chests has something inside of them with one of the chests containing not only the proof of invincibility but this week's platinum camper. But beware inside two of the chests are the grain cracker of disappointment and a black pearl and trust me you don't want the latter. Chris said as the campers gulped. We're going to win Izuku. Achako said as Izuku nods. Now come up to the stage and pull a clue to your key's location or you'll walk the plank. Chris said. Confessional booth. What she didn't say anything about not using pirate lingo. Chris said with a shrug. Fair enough. Me said with a shrug. The campers pull out their clues and one by one they read them. The hella bear cave, Owen said after reading his clue. I was hoping you get that one dude, Chris said with a grin. Heather looks at her clue and wonders what that is. Ha uh -huh. chef's fridge nice. I hear he brushes it daily for fingerprints, Chris said still grinning. Chef just glares at Heather while he smiles and waves. Jeff was looked at his clue and Chris's grin became larger. That there is the skeptic tank for the washrooms, Chris said. Ah uh, fuck, Jeff said. All you scallywags go find your keys and bring them back by 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to open up your chest and get your loot. Fare thee well young scallywags now get to it. Chris said as the challenge starts. Confessional booth. I don't know who came up with these lame-o challenges and memo to Chris those pirate tight do not exactly flatter your legs savvy. Heather said with an eye roll. Woohoo I am all about the treasure hunt, yes. The bears are a little concerning but there's treasure. Owen said. Thank God and the glowing baby that I don't have to go through bears and the like. One bear attack is more than enough for me. Cody said. Ah dude this is so not cool. If I had a nickel for every time I leave smelling like shit. Then I'd have three nickels. Which isn't a lot but it's still weird that it happened three times. Jeff said as he groans. With Izuku. Izuku's first challenge is to garb as his key in the shark infested lake. Chris said as Izuku thinks. And by thinks it really means muttering on how to avoid the sharks he then comes up with an idea. He grabs a few fishes tosses them into the lake and gets the key that way. Okay that was simple. Izuku said as Achako hugs him. With Heather. Heather must retrieve her from inside a chef's bank vault of a fridge without getting caught. Chris said as Heather opens the fridge door. Only to reveal that chef was already inside. Heather traumatized for the billionth time closes the door and walks away. Okay I might need some help for this. Heather said. With Cody. Cody has to get his key from Uri without provoking Granny and Co. Chris said as Cody raises an eyebrow. Hey Uri can I have the key I'll trade you some apple gummies. Cody said as he shows Uri the 10 packets of apple flavored gummies. A drooling Uri rushes towards Cody with key in hand and says. Shut up and take my key. Uri said as she holds the key like in that one meme. Confessional booth. Looks like things are looking up for me. Cody said with a grin. Uri is happily eating her gummies. And Ko is seen shaking her head in disapproval at what Cody did. With Gwen. Gwen managed to get her key after flooding a skunk's den. Yes no tomato baths for me. Though I can't say the same for Jeff. Gwen said. With Heather. We go back to Heather as she and Lindsay were working together to get the key. Heather managed to sneak into the kitchen as Chef slept and gotten the key. 
Heather thought as she tells Lindsay to pull her up. How as Lindsay did this a fly bothered her so much that she dropped Heather. However the universe had already used its bad things happen to Heather Freebie. As she not only holds onto the rope but does a matrix to grab the key. Chef woke up to the sound and spoke. How come all the other kids get ponies? Chef said as he went back to sleep. Heather took the chance to get back up. With Duncan. Duncan had managed to get his key from the flaming ring. Huh, way too easy. Duncan said. Duncan's though exterior seems to be helping him with his challenge. Chris said. With DJ. DJ was climbing a tree trying to reach his key. But good old DJ seems a bit out of his league. Chris said. Unfortunately a woodpecker broke the branch causing both him and the key to fall. At least I got it. Ouch. DJ said as he groans in pain. With Jeff. Jeff was readying himself to enter the septic tank. Meanwhile back in the communal washrooms things are starting to pile up. Chris said. Let's get this fucking over with. Jeff said as he puts on a snorkel. Sometime later. Soon everyone started getting their keys as the rest of the campers got their keys. Examples of Lindsay and Izzy getting stung and bitten. Katie playing chess with a woolly beaver and said beaver winning. Owen getting trapped by the bear and Bridget facing a rabid bunny. Until the only one left was none other than Achako. What did she had to do well? Achako has to face her future mother-in-law in quirkless combat in order to get her key and to make sure they don't get an easy victory. Harry will be until chef's care. Chris said. Achako blushed at the prospect of Inko being Izuku's mother-in-law. But she shakes her head as she goes into a stance. Inko does the same. After a bit they clashed but thanks to Achako's training with Yue, Gunhead and Ruku she dominated Inko and took the key. Though she will admit that Inko made her work for it. Sorry Inko-san. Achako said as Inko chuckled. Don't worry about it Achako-chan. Inko said. Soon it was now 6 p.m. and it was time to open the chests. It'd be time to claim your treasure. Those fortunate enough to bear a precious key come forth with it. Chris said. Duncan was the first to do so only to get a bunch of snacks. Is this the best you can do? Duncan asked. Chris nodded as Duncan frowns. I want to be surprised but I'm not. Duncan said as he eats his chips. Owen was next and received a brand new state-of-the-art gaming PC. Fuck yeah this is awesome. Owen said. Yeah originally I wanted that some keys didn't open chests but my boss said no. Chris said with a pout. Also can you do something about him? Owen said gesturing at Bear that somehow stuffed half of Owen's body into its mouth. Owen's answer was multiple tranquilizer shots hitting the bear with one of them hitting Owen. The bear soon falls down and Owen thanks him. Gwen was next and got a toaster. It was then Heather's turn and upon opening her chest. Oh what's this a platinum camper and an invincibility pass. Lucky me. Heather said. Soon everyone was getting their prizes from Cody getting some sodas. To Lindsay getting an accordion. But when Leshana opened her chest she was not happy. Oh hell nah I got the fucking graham cracker. Leshana said as she holds the graham cracker of disappointment. Soon it was down to one chest and the person that opened it was. Achako. Oh sorry Achako looks like you got the black pearl meaning you along with one other camper is getting off the island. For real this time. Chris said as Achako's eyes goes wide. Achako took a deep breath as he told Nko and Iri to stay and cheer Izuku on. Oh shit. Duncan said as they lost another vote. Don't worry you still have to vote so go on and cast them and I'll see you buccaneers back at the campfire after sundown. Chris said. Later that night. We find the campers at the campfire where another camper is going home along with Izuku. And now the moment we've all been waiting for the moment of truth. Marshmallow time. Chris said as he shows the plate of marshmallows. Chris explains the routine but the campers already knew about it. They didn't know who to vote for since Leshana can't vote and Heather has triple voting power. Izzy, Jeff, Katie, Bridget, DJ, Izuku, Leshana, Lindsay, Heather, Owen and Cody marshmallows for the lot of ya. Meaning Gwen and Achako are out of here. Chris said as he shows the empty plate. We then see Izuku hugging Achako as they cried. Beat Heather down for me baby. Achako said as Izuku nods. As the girls got on the Achako wave goodbye to Izuku as he cried as well. I'll see you soon Machai-chan. Izuku said. With Achako. Yanni dekaru ai. Achako said as she cried and Gwen patted her on the back. Back at camp. Izuku retires for the night as Leshana gives Izuku a pillow before leaving to teach Heather a lesson. It was the pillow Achako used. It didn't stay dry. Chapter 19. Hide and be sneaky. We find Chris once again at the dock of shame ready to make the intro. Previously on Total Drama Island. Campers searched for treasure and yours truly putting an impressive performance as a pirate. But this was no ordinary treasure hunt some of the campers put their lives on the line to snag their booty. While Jeff put his stomach on the line while doing something that would make most people hurl. But in the end it was Heather who received the platinum camper. Leshana the cracker and in a surprise twist both Gwen and Achako walked the plank towards the dock of shame. Chris said as the scenes of the previous episode play out. So how much hate mail did we get Chris? Daniel said. With or without the death threats. Anyway who will be the unlucky camper to walk the dock of shame? Who will lose their cool? Who will lose their lunch? Find out on the most shocking episode yet on. Chris said as he does the last part of the intro. 
Total. Drama. Island. Today we find Lindsay and Heather sitting at the steps of the girl's cabin where Lindsay is drinking grape soda, while Heather is holding a pair of ruined pants. I am so glad they included grape tastic pop to your reward last night, Heather. It's totally my favorite, it's the only thing I've really been craving on the island. Lindsay said as she slumped. Heather simply took the soda taking a sip but then spits it out. How can you drink this sugar water? Heather angrily said as she tosses the soda bottle as Lindsay gasped. Confessional booth. It was nighttime where Lindsay without her bracelet as she pinches the bridge of her brow. Okay Heather is a foul bitch. I'm surprised that my dumb version doesn't see that. She steals my stuff, takes my clothes and calls me names. How my dumb version thinks of her a friend is beyond me. Lindsay said. Who cares about friends in this world there are shepherds and their sheep and Lindsay is a major sheep. Heather said with a grin. But for a few seconds until she remembers about Lindsay's quirk. Well at least a suppressed version of her. Heather said. She doesn't respect me nor my attempts at strategizing. Lindsay said. I will admit the smart Lindsay is concerning to deal with. But the dumb one. I've got flip flops smarter than her. But hey she's useful right now so I'll keep her close until she's no longer useful. After that I'll dump her. Heather said. Honestly the only good things in this island was the realization of Izuacha and Owen. Which I got to find a way to remind my dumb version to confess to Owen. Lindsay said, With Izuku, Izuku was glum, sad that Achako was eliminated after just getting together. Bro you can't being this sad. Hell I bet she'd kick your ass with your moping. Jeff said, This got a chuckle out of Izuku. He wipes his tears and gives a smile to the other guys. You're right guys, Achako would not only kick my ass but also send it towards the damn sun. Izuku said with a smile, Yeah man so her by making it far little dude. Jeff said with a grin, Sometime later dock of shame. We find Chris and campers ready for the next challenge. Okay for today's challenge is a good old fashioned game of hide and seek. Chris said. Harry who was next to Chris raised an eyebrow. What's hide and seek? Harry asked as everyone. Confessional booth. What the fuck? Chris simply said. Oh Harry. Izuku said saddened by Harry's words. Um the fuck. Bridget said. I don't get. Harry said with a shrug. Dock of shame. Chris shakes his head as he continues. Luak, you have 10 minutes to hide before both Chef Hatchet and Henry comes looking for you. With Chef's military background, advanced degree in manhunt and doctorate in search and rescue, he is uniquely qualified to make this game excruciatingly hard. Chris said with a grin. Chef takes out a water gun and pumps it like a shotgun. More like overqualified. Izuku muttered. For Iri, I just want her to have some fun. Chris said as Iri waves. What's with the water gun? Duncan asked as a laser pointer is aimed at Duncan's head. The lifeguard chair is home base when either one of them find you they will spray you. If you escape their blast you can run to home base. But if they catches you they'll douse you. Chris said. I was going to make a crack about the water gun but I'm pretty sure you turned it into a support item. Duncan said having learned to expect anything and everything when it came to Chris. Why don't you demonstrate them chef? Chris said with a smirk. Chef pumps the water gun and he turns around and fires at Chris unleashing a torrent of water at him sending her over a few meters. Not on me dude. Chris shouted. Heather asked Chris about the win conditions. Chris explained that in order to win they needed to hide until time is up, reach home base and if caught help Chef and Harry find the others. Winning would get the winner invincibility. Chris gave the campers 10 minutes to hide and everyone does it except for Lindsay who decided to just run around in circles. That was just sad, Harry said as she shakes her head. Indeed little uni well indeed. Chris said. Chef nods in agreement. 10 minutes later, the hiding period had ended and everyone was hiding. Leshana decided to hide in the lake breathing through a straw with a lily pad on it. The girls decide where to hide in. The boys on the other hand decided to speak. With the boys. The boys were hiding in a cave discussing about the game. Okay besides reaffirming the guys alliance what should we do? Duncan asked. Well I think we have a chance since they're not the most communicative right now. DJ said as Owen nodded. The both of them remembering the massive cat fight this morning. I agree with Duncan I'm sure they can smell the blood in the water. Izuku said. Guys I got something say in regards to the girls. Cody said. Duncan looked at him and nodded at him as if telling him to continue. Right the girls knew that since Izuku and Achako got together they would make an alliance. And when we made the guys alliance the girls made a pact to eliminate Achako. Cody said. So they were on to us. But where did you get that intel from? Duncan asked. From Katie believe or not. She told me about. She also told me that they had a bunch of plans but then the black pearl happened. Cody said. Izuku is a bit bummed out but understands. Alright so with that out of the way. Guys unite to save our asses from elimination. Duncan said as he laid his hand out. Agree. DJ, Owen, Cody and Izuku said as they placed their hand on top of Duncan's. Jeff hesitated a bit since he likes Bridget but he does the same in the end. Sometime later. Everyone was now hiding in multiple places except for Izzy who was following Chef and Eerie. When the both of them turned around to look behind them Izzy was already hiding behind a bush and sometime later in a rock. 
Heather hid under the table of the kitchen while Lindsay did the same. This resulted in an argument where Chef found them after turning on the lights. Heather, Heather, hey. This is my kitchen also known as Forbidden Territory, Chef said with a grin. Take her, Heather said as she pushes Lindsay at Chef. In a panic, Lindsay screams and runs like her life depended on it. Chef chases the both of them as the girls rush towards home base. However, just as they were about to make it, Chef blasted them with the water gun taking the both of them out of the game. Soaking wet, Heather glares at Lindsay. This is all your fault, Lindsay, Heather said. Sorry, Lindsay said. It was then that Lindsay noticed something missing or rather someone. Hey, Chef wasn't eerie with you, Lindsay asked. Oh, don't worry about the little uni while she just gonna find Izuku. Chef said. Ugh, if anyone can find him, it's her. Heather said. With a re. Hiri was looking for Izuku in the cabins but pouted when she couldn't find him. Where are you, Papa? Hiri said as she holds up her tiny green water pistol. As she walks out of the cabin looking for Izuku, she didn't see a rock that was in the way and fell on the ground scrapping her knee. Hiri was hurt she teared up but it wasn't as Kai blowing her up over and over again for her Kirkwork blood. She needed to find Mr. Hatchet to heal her. But then someone stood over her. That someone is Izuku. Hiri, are you okay? Izuku asked, worried about Hiri. I scrapped my knee, Hiri said with tears in her eyes. Izuku picked her and began walking towards me. Screw the challenge, Hiri came first. Hiri squirted Izuku with her water pistol. Izuku didn't mind losing at all. He sees Heather and Lindsay sitting on the steps of the camp lounge when all of a sudden he hears a commotion. Camp lounge. Chef was now fighting Izzy and he had to admit her skills in CQC is flawless. But what she had in skill, he had an experience. They continued to fight until Izzy ran off. You'll never take me alive. Izzy shouted. Of course I can easily fuck it up. Chef said. At least he knew where she was going. The dock of shame. Chef was chasing Izzy at the docks while Heather, Lindsay and Izuku looked for other campers. Izzy slides on her belly to reach home base but Chef anticipated this and fired not at Izzy but the part of the dock near the home base making her slide into the lake. Izzy pouted as she sat at the bottom of the lake and that is where she sees Leshana. Both girls nodded as Izzy swam back up. You're done Izzy. Chef said as he heard a scream coming from the campfire site. After getting there he could smell the stink on her. Ah, oh, technically I don't have spray you. Chef started. Just fucking spray me already, Chef. Bridget shouted as Chef does just that. Alright, surfer brat, but had you let me finish I would have switched it with tomato juice but you have to be impatient. Chef said. Bridget then remembers that she was sprayed by skunks meaning she needed Chef to spray her with tomato juice not water. Oh well, fuck. Bridget said as she follows Chef. With Izzy right behind them. With DJ and Owen. DJ and Owen were arguing about their hiding spot which was the roof of the camp lodge. They would continue to do this until they hear a creaking sound. Oh, Owen, do you hear that? DJ asked. Depends how much do you weigh? Owen asked. About 46 kilos and you? DJ asked. About 120. We're going to fall, aren't we? Owen said. We should have just kept our mouths shut. DJ said as Owen nods. Oh. Both DJ and Owen shouted as they fall down to the lodge. Oh, fuck, that hurts. DJ said as he got up. Lucky you do it, at least you didn't land on your balls. Owen said as the both of them get out only to see Izuku. Sorry, guys, but you're caught. Izuku said. Oh, damn it. DJ said, well that sucks but hey better you to get invincibility than say Heather. Owen said, that's fair. Izuku said, it was then that Heather, Lindsay and the others appeared. Heather growled at the sight of Izuku finding DJ and Owen meaning he had invincibility. I found Owen and DJ Chef. Izuku said, meaning you get invincibility. Good job and where's Eri? Chef asked. She scrapped her knee. So I took her to me. Izuku said as Chef nods. All right time to find the rest. Chef said as he and the group finds them. And he does just that. First he finds Cody hidden in some grass. Good job in the camouflage but you lose. Chef said as Cody groans. Next was Katie who hid in Mee's infirmary. They also see Eri pointing her water pistol at her. Good job little uni well. Chef said as Eri beams. Next he found Jeff in a very tall tree. Chef kicks the tree making Jeff fall down. You're done son. Chef said. Fuck that hurts. Jeff said. Jeff fell down the tree. Eri said with a chuckle. Finally he finds Duncan in the bear cave. Alright already you got me damn it. Duncan said. I guess that's everyone then. Jeff said. What about Leshona? Owen said, Leshona, but I searched everywhere. Chef said thinking back to the places he checked. Harry did the same until her eyes went wide. Chef the water Leshona hid in the lake. Harry shouted as Chef ran back to the docks. The other campers and Harry follow him. But upon reaching the dock of shame they see Leshona sitting on the lifeguard's chair. What took you so long sugar? Leshona said with a grin. The campers cheer for Leshana while Chef nods respectfully. Confessional booth. Ah the classic lily pad breathing straw technique. I'll have to remember that one next time. Chef said with a grin. Doc of shame. All right campers game's over. Time to pick the loser and send them home. Chris said. With the girls. The girls decides to work together to vote one the boys off the island. Bridget reminded outside due to the skunk smell. Okay then so it's either Owen or Duncan. Katie said. Right girl. Duncan is an ass. Leshana said. Owen is just too happy all the time I don't trust him. Heather said. Yeah Owen has to go. Lindsay said as she is painting her nails. Confessional booth. Okay that was a limited edition nail polish. What the flying fuck. 
You know I'm starting to think that my smarty voice is right and that Heather isn't my friend but a vile bitch. Lindsay said, You with us, Heather said as Katie and Leshana shakes their heads. No, Bridget said, Fine then let the chip fall where they may. Heather said as she leaves, Fine bitch, Leshana said, With the boys. The boys were deciding on who to eliminate. Okay so it's agreed we eliminate Bridget. Duncan said, What about Heather? Izuku has invincibility and not her. Jeff said, she would be a good choice but Bridget is likable and good at sports. We may never get another chance. Duncan said, yeah and with Izuku having the platinum camper it will be easier for us. Cody said, all in favor of booting Bridget. Duncan asked, the guys once more placing there on top another with a reluctant Jeff doing the same. Campfire sight. The campfire ceremony is underway. Everyone save three. Owen, Duncan and Bridget. Chris who is holding the plate with two marshmallow. There are only two marshmallows left on this plate. You three racked up a lot of votes each. One of you is going home tonight and cannot return ever. Chris said. The three campers don't believe him at all. The next marshmallow goes to. Owen. Chris said as he tosses the treat to Owen's mouth. Woohoo all right. Owen said with a cheer. I'm so glad you won Owen. Lindsay said. Okay the final marshmallow of the night goes to. Duncan. Chris said as he gives the marshmallow to Duncan. The campers gasped and even Chris admits that he is shocked. Soon the campers say goodbye to Bridget with Jeff admitting that he didn't vote her off which gets him into some trouble with the other guys save Izuku. Later that night, Hey Duncan you sure that it was okay to leave Jeff like that? Izuku asked. Yeah it is. The dude needs to know that you can't always think with your dick. Duncan said. Izuku shrugs as they go to sleep. Vancouver International Airport. When the plane from Japan arrived at Vancouver landed. One of the passengers in particular was very excited to being here. Oh Izuku I'm here. Himiko said with a faint smile. She chuckles as she skips to her destination. Camp Wewanekwa. Chapter 20. That's off the chain. We find Chris once again at the dock of shame ready to make the intro. Last time on Total Drama Island. In a challenge of hide and seek campers had to avoid capture by Sheffield or join his guerrilla tactics to tag fellow campers. Chris said with a grin. Highlights of Chef finding campers were shown. Our resident rule screwing Greenette is making ovaries explode by showing the just how damn of a dad he will be. In the end however Leshana won invincibility and Bridget was banished from the island no thanks to the lovesick Jeff. Chris said as more highlights were shown. Mostly about Izuku losing the challenge and taking Eri to me. Ugh why we're so impatient Bridge. Daniel said as she shakes his head. Will the guys other than Izuku trust Jeff again? Will the girls form an alliance? Will I be stuck hosting reality TV for the rest of my life? Find out on this episode of. Chris said as he does the last part of the intro. Total. Drama. Island. We find ourselves back at camp where some of the campers are playing frisbee. Those who are were Izuku, Owen, DJ, Leshana and Duncan. Harry was also there watching the action with a small smile. We also see Lindsay and Heather at the docks where Lindsay is trying to kill a fly only to hit Heather's face. Heather not being happy about it hits Lindsay with the fly swatter. <laughs> Lindsay thought, now make yourself useful and clip my toenails. Heather said as she shows her foot with long nails. Back with the people who were playing frisbee they heard the sound of Jeff crying. Everyone already knew on what it was. It was Jeff who was crying about Bridget being gone. Oof, sound like Jeff is having a hard time accepting that Bridget is kicked out. Leshana said, TCH yeah he's so weak. Duncan said, I'm gonna help him after all he got me out of my funk when I was sad about Achako. Izuku said as he leaves to check on Jeff. Hey super dork wait up. Duncan said as he and the other guys went with him. Once they were gone the girls began to speak. Okay I know the guys aren't that dumb. Izzy said. Oh they are dumb they need Jeff's vote. Heather said. With Jeff. Jeff was leaving the confessional booth when Owen caught him. Did a boy. Hug it out. Owen said not knowing her strength. Dude fuck you're crushing me. Jeff said as Owen lets go dropping Jeff on the ground. Sorry. Owen said. Jeff you okay. Izuku asked worried about Jeff. Yeah I'm fine bro. Jeff said as he stands up. Look man voting Bridget off was just a strategic move. If the guy alliance stands strong we can win this. So are you in? Duncan said as the rest of the guy's fist bumped. Save for Jeff. He was about to speak when Izuku spoke up. Jeff I may not know Bridget well but I'm pretty sure she will kick your ass if you don't give it your all. Izuku said. Jeff shakes his head for a bit before smiling. You're right hero dude. She would totally kick me ass. Jeff said as he smells the bacon and rushes to get some. I guess he's in and it's thanks to you super dork. Duncan said as Izuku smiles. Confessional booth. Jeff helped me so I helped him. I owed him one. Izuku said with a smile. But like all good things it had to come to an end as Chris spoke. Morning campers the next challenge awaits you in the arts and crafts center. Chris said. Arts and crafts center. With Chris walking by as the camper wait for his word. Welcome to the arts and crafts center. Chris said. More like the arts and crafts center. Duncan said with crossed arms. Yeah it used to be an outhouse but now it's where Chef Parks is Roadhog. Chris said as he kicks down the door. Upon looking inside he sees a classic style motorcycle. The boys were excited upon seeing the bike. Beaut. Duncan said with a grin. Awesome. Owen said with a smile on his face. DJ and Cody gave it a thumbs up. 
Izuku for some reason imagines Ochako in biker attire and himself in a school uniform. A girl's not so much. Which brings us to your challenge building your own wheels and by that I mean bikes. Chris said. Chris heard some complaints but Chris puts an end to that. Yeah I know it's lame but due to one of us not being of legal age to handle a motor vehicle we have to stick with bikes. Chris explained. Everyone looked at Izuku knowing full well that he's the reason that they can't build motorcycles. Sorry, Izuku said. Anywho you'll find all the parts needed at the bike depot. Once you do you can trick them out however you want. Best design wins part one of the challenge. Oh and before any of you get any ideas, fuck up chef's ride and you're disqualified. Chris said as he tosses a moldy bike manual at Heather. You it's furry. Heather said as she tosses it to Izzy. Cool mold spores. Izzy said. Ug freak. We get first dibs. Heather said. Confessional booth. Bebe biz izzy izzy t t t. Finally a challenge I can get behind. I used to build bikes with my brothers all the time. Duncan said with a fond smile. That was until he frowned. Okay so I used to steal them from the dweebs from down the street and crash them into the school wall. But the point is this is something I know. Duncan said. Bebe biz izzy izzy t t t. Owen rummaged at the bike depot as he takes out a pair of handlebars. Hell yeah I'm gonna make my dream bike. Owen excitedly said as he accidentally hits Lindsay. The fall actually hits Lindsay's AQ bracelet causing it to malfunction. Oh, what the hell? Lindsay said as she notices the damaged bracelet. Lindsay was about to say when Heather grabbed her. Lindsay see the fancy motorcycle with all the fancy parts. Dismantle it. Heather said. Ah Heather did you forget what Chris said? If we touch Chef's bike it will mean instant disqualification. Lindsay said. So what it's not like Chris can see us. Heather said. What makes you think that he didn't hide a camera in the shed? Lindsay countered. Heather was about to speak but realized that she couldn't counter her argument. Her very good argument. It was then that Heather sees broken bracelet. Heather thought. Oh how smart are you now? Heather asked. Not a brainiac like my usual self but still smarter than when the bracelet is fully active. Lindsay said. Good enough for me. How about we build those bikes? Heather said. Sure I should be able to make a decent pair for the both of us. Lindsay said as she gets the parts need for the bikes. Confessional booth. As much as I want to sabotage Heather's bike. I know for a god in fact that Chris will do something random so I'll just build decent bike to satisfy her. Lindsay said. Oh, an un. We're going in first. You'll just have to wait your turn or you can save yourselves the trouble and effort and not even bother. Heather said with a smirk on her face. The other girls glare at her. But a seagull takes a dump on Heather's hair. Oh fuck not my hair. <laughs> Heather screamed as she ran. Got to love karma. Katie said. I guess it's payback for her being a bitch. Leshana said. With the boys. The boys were hard at work making their rides. Duncan was making his bike and DJ was making himself some armor. Cody built a frame and Izuku was putting the finishing touches of his bike. Jeff was painting a picture of Bridget and finally Owen was pumping air into his tire only to fart and kill a seagull possibly the same one that shat on Heather. With the girls. The girls were having some trouble mostly Katie and Leshana. They had some idea on what to do and had the manual to help them out. Izzy on the other hand. Whoa how in nine hells did you do that? Leshana said as she sees Izzy's bike. Which was made out of wood. Oh, my brother was a mechanic until a villain with a car quirk ran him over and caused him to develop a fear of motor vehicles. Izzy said with a grin. Luff sorry about your brother. Leshana said. That's fine girl he's recovering in Europe and he takes his bike to work. Come on, let's take it for a spin. Izzy said. Alright you're on. Leshana said. Confessional booth. That girl might be crazy. But I wasn't about to pass up an opportunity to win this race. Her bike looked fine despite being made out of termite food. Leshana said. Sweet your extra weight will totally give us extra speed. Izzy said. Oh, I'm gonna take that as a compliment. Leshana said as Izzy smiles. Izzy pedals the bike and goes quite quickly. But they also go down the slope. With Lindsay. Lindsay was hard at work making the bikes for herself and Heather. As she did this she finds a doll which wasn't flattering at all. Ugh I'm sure my dumb side would have said something stupid. Lindsay said as she tosses the doll aside and got back to work. With the boys. DJ had just placed a helmet on his head and tested it by headbutting a tree. Satisfied with the helmet DJ smiles. Hey do you guys remember your first bike rides? Owen asked. Oh yeah I wiped out so bad I popped my collarbone. You could see it sticking out of shoulder. I was wicked. Duncan said with a smile. My first bike ride ended with losing five of my baby teeth. I got a hell of a payout from the tooth fairy. Best 50 bucks earned. Cody said with a grin. I flew so far over my handlebars that I skid for a mile. Skin was hanging of me in chunks. Jeff said with a small laugh. Well I might as well say but I did get a bike but I never got to ride it as Beck Hugo blew it up then he followed it up by blowing me up. Izuku said. Oh that's rough buddy. Cody said as he patted Izuku's back. Oh there was nothing I popped my arm out of my socket. It took three doctors to hold me down to slingshot it back into place. Owen said. Ah good times. Duncan, Owen, Jeff and Cody said at the same time. DJ was speechless at but sobered up. Yeah fuck that shit. DJ said as he takes off his helmet and replaces it with a knight's helmet. 
It was then that Chris spoke. Campers, time to judge your bikes. Put your pedal to the metal and meet me at the craft center. Chris said, Arts and Craft Center. We see Chris about to judge the bikes. Well, campers, we gave you guys the parts. Let's see what you came up with. Chris said as he went to Heather. Heather grinned as he complimented the aerodynamics of her bike. It only weights two ounces. Heather proudly said, Like your brain. Katie spoke back. Chris then walks up to Katie's bike. Huh, a bit simple but not bad. Chris said kite size in relief. He then walks up to Duncan's wheels. Wicked Mad Max mobile dude. Chris said. He then sees Cody's bike. Huh. Man, not the worst I've seen but you can do better. Chris said. Aw oh, man. Cody said. Chris was impressed with Lindsay's bike as well. He also liked Owen's trike. Despite being a tricycle and not a bike it still counts and it's awesome. Chris said. Yes. Owen said with a grin. He then saw Izuku's bike. Oh this is the most bike looking bike I've seen thus far. Also glitter. Chris said with a raised eyebrow. Iri wanted to help and can you say no to that face? Izuku said it shows a photo of Iri's puppy eyes. No I can't my dude. Chris said admitting that not even he can say no to that face. He then sees DJ's bike. Which had training wheels. Dude seriously this is lame. Chris said as he sees an armored DJ. Well better to lame than dead. DJ said. Fair enough. Chris said. Finally he sees Jeff's bike. Now this is a hot rod nice. Chris said as Jeff grins. Thanks bro. Jeff said with a tear in his eye. Confessional booth. I still miss Bridget. I wish I could have convinced them to vote off Heather but I suppose it makes sense to vote off my girl. Still fucking sucks though. Jeff said. Hey where's Izzy and Leshana? Oh well they're lost. Because this is where it gets good. Pause we are gonna race these babies hard. Chris said with a grin on his. Heather was about to say something but Lindsay shakes her head. Here's a twist you won't use in your own bike but rather you'll be switching them. Chris said. This shocked the campers. Had a cruel twist to my right. Alrighty then see you at the beach. Chris said. The beach. Chris was on his ATV holding a helmet while Chef was reading a book and the campers were waiting for him. Okay here's how it works. Everyone picks a name out of the helmet whose bike you're riding if your bike makes it across the finish line then you get to ride it in the final round for invincibility. Chris said as he explained the challenge. Heather was pissed no she got DJ's bike. Heather I got your bike. Lindsay said. Good. Cross the finish line on my bike and then I ride for invincibility. Heather said. Okay and if I'm losing I'll just push the big red button. Lindsay said. Wait what? Heather said as she sees said button. Now before we start has anyone seen Lashana and Izzy? Chris asked. With said girls. The girls were cruising along the river won their bike. Somehow. Back at the beach. After getting notes from the other campers. They prepared themselves for the race. Okay racers on your marks. Get set. Paramedics on standby and drag. Chris said as the campers raced on. Hey where are the pedals? Izuku said as he noticed a motor on his bike. Upon noticing the motor he finds a string which led to the skull. Izuku pulls on the thing and goes. Oh. Izuku screamed as he zoomed on by. Hmm. Chris said as he pulls out a tablet. Upon seeing it he raised an eyebrow. Chef's bike is intact. Ah there must have been a motor on the depot. Chris said. Heather was struggling to use DJ's bike. Why the flying fuck did DJ put fucking training wheels on his bike? Heather said as she kicked the bike hurting her foot. Meanwhile Cody was pushing the pedal to the metal with Owen's tricycle. While Duncan rode on the Sunset Sally. Okay this is messed up but yeah this is one moving ride. Duncan said with a wide smile. Lindsay rode up next to him. I know right. Lindsay said. Both of them saw a giant sand cloud and in front of that cloud is Izuku who was on his seventh lap. Duncan how do I stop this thing? Izuku shouted. Duncan heard this and shouted at him. Yo super dork slammed the skull ornament that will stop you. Duncan shouted as Izuku did just that. This caused the bike to stop after passing the finish line for the eighth time though it caused him to crash. Thank you, Izuku shouted. While that happened Izuku is our first finalist for invincibility. Chris said. Thank you Chris. Izuku said dusting himself off. With Owen and Katie. While Cody was riding on Owen's tricycle while she rode on Izuku's bike. As she rode on the bike she sees Owen riding on Cody's bike. All in all it was looking good. Until Owen crashes to ground. Destroying the bike. Katie continues on. Oh god damn it. Owen said. With DJ. DJ was riding Jeff's bike and making good headway. Jeff rode up with Katie's bike. Hat don't do it I use the best bolts. Jeff said. Confessional booth. Okay so I forgot the bolts. Jeff said with shrug. As if Jeff had summoned Murphy Jeff's bike broke into pieces making DJ fall down. This in turn made Jeff crashes into DJ and destroys Gwen's bike. Fuck. Forgot to wear jock. DJ said. Damn that hurt. Jeff said. Unknown to both of them Heather was rushing in but like the boys she crashed as well. Soon however several campers cross the finish line. Chris on his ATV rides up to the finish line to see the winners. Yes we have three awesome wipeouts by Heather, Jeff, Cody, Owen and DJ. Chris said. Said campers that wiped out came walking to see that the second part is over. Now the ones that are competing are the following. Lindsay's Sunset Sally, Heather's Speed Machine, Owen's Super Trike, Duncan's Lethal Weapon, Katie's Stylish Bike and Izuku's Mighty Bike. 
Chris said as the campers that are racing cheered. Chef whistled to calm the campers down. All right then now it's time for the TDI motocross. Chris said as he leaves. Okay now what? Lindsay asked. Now we just need to win the next part of the challenge. So bring your game on all right. Heather said as Lindsay nods. Meanwhile with Leshana and Izzy. Fuck oh shit. Leshana said as both she and Izzy left a thorn field behind them. Hey hey ha ha ha. Izzy laughed as she rides on. The chipmunk on Leshana's head falls off. Back with the campers. We find the campers without bikes sitting atop a hill while the ones with bikes ready to race. Wow sweet wheels. Also sorry about hurting you earlier are you alright? Owen asked. I'm fine Owen though I'll admit my time in TDI is gonna be over soon. Lindsay said. Duncan was about to pull Owen's ear when he heard that tidbit. What do you mean Lindsay? Heather said getting mad. I'm technically using my quirk meaning I'm gone once the challenge is over. Lindsay said. Campers welcome to the motocross challenge. Using your own bikes you'll race the course avoiding hidden pitfalls. Cue the death traps. Chris said. Ah oh, death traps. Owen said. First there's dodging the land mines. Second maneuvering though the oil slick and finally jumping the piranhas. Chris said as all three traps are demonstrated. The campers gasped while Izuku raised an eyebrow. I replaced the piranhas pool in oil slick with a giant chasm and a horde of giant robots and it would be like the UA Sport Festival obstacle course. Izuku said. Ah uh, what? Chris dumbly asked. Confessional booth. How in nine miserable fucks is that even legal? Also I wonder if the rat bastard would give me some of those zero pointers. Chris said. Somehow Nezu hijacked the signal of TDI to broadcast his own confessional. I'll be sure to ask my legal team but I believe I can. Nezu said. Uh, no wonder my boss's plan is to surrender when Nezu tries to take over the world. Chris said. Yeah, I'd say it's a pretty solid plan hell I even joined Nezu's army. Chef said. Back at the beach. Chris decide to get back on track. Oh and one more thing. The first one to cross wins invincibility and the last one to cross gets the boot. No bonfire, do not pass go and do not collect the marshmallow. Chris said shocking the campers. With no signal needed they were off. They all pedaled like their lives depended on it which may have might be. When they reached the minefield Owen blew up making him lose. Duncan, Katie and Heather survived all while both Lindsay and Izuku flew across it. Then came the oil slick. This is where Duncan lost due to his bike somehow sinking into the oil. Lindsay took the lead and thanks to the mop tail of her bike Izuku, Katie and Heather passed by safely. Once they began to reach the piranha pool Izuku and Katie got through. Heather got stuck and Lindsay due to her increased brain power due to her broken AQ bracelet simply went around the pool. This led to Izuku winning the challenge. And we have our winner. Izuku. Chris said. Yes I did it. Izuku said with a smile. Oh my baby. He did it. And Ko said as she cried. Hiri who had an umbrella smiled. Papa is the best. Hiri said. The campers that didn't participate in the final race cheered for Izuku. While Heather screamed like a little bitch. Katie, Lindsay sorry to say but you're both eliminated. Chris said. Katie was confused but Lindsay nods. As for why it's simple Lindsay you've been using your quirk. Granted it was in a lesser form but you still used it in a non-quirk challenge. Meaning you're disqualified. Katie with Lindsay gone and the others haven't crossed the finish line. Chris said. Meaning I was technically the last one to cross meaning I lost. Katie said. Yup. Chris said. Say Chris since I lost can you get this off of me? Lindsay said as she shows the broken AQ bracelet. Sure. Chris said with a shrug as he deactivated the AQ bracelet. Lindsay with her intelligence returning she turns to Heather. Well then before I'd like that you are a total bitch. So much so that I'm surprised you would be able to attract dogs let alone people. Lindsay said. What do Heather started to say but Lindsay ignored her. In all of my short life I have never met such a low life two timing backstabbing bitch ass slut. Who couldn't even think out of a fucking paper bag. A skank with a peanut sized brain could come up with better ideas than you. You just a motherfucking twat who blew the producer's dick just to be on the show. I'd rather be staring at Owen's ass and Izzy's tits than look at slutly bitch ass face. Lindsay said as she starts walking away. Heather and everyone was left speechless at Lindsay rant. But suddenly she turns around to get one last word. Oh by the way. Your shoes are tacky, your shorts are shit in that top. So 2007. Lindsay said as she walked away with her head held up high. It was then that Chris found his voice. Hey Katie. Chris said. Yeah. Katie said. Could you give this to Lindsay? Chris said as he hands Katie the platinum camper. Katie nods as follows Lindsay. Holy shit. Duncan said. I think I'm in love. Owen said with a blush. Doc of shame. Everyone was there to say goodbye to Lindsay and Katie. Thanks for your support guys. I love you Leshana. Owen. Izzy I know it's not the best time but I really like the both of you. As in like like you guys. Lindsay said. Oh I do too girl I thought I'd had to be the mistress but a polycule is good. Izzy said as she gives Lindsay a kiss. After parting lips she was then kissed by Owen. Oh fuck yeah. Lindsay said with a dopey grin. Take care girlfriend if it makes you feel better we would have kept you on. Leshana said. I know. Have you said your goodbyes Katie? Lindsay asked. I did and it was awesome. Katie said with a grin. Then Cody walked right up face filled with lipstick marks on his face. Yeah awesome. Cody said with a grin of his own. 
The eyes do me a solid and what Heathers asks for me all right. Lindsay said, It would be my fucking pleasure. Leshana said with a smile, Heather I hope you get everything karma gives you. Lindsay said as she gets on boat of losers. Katie does the same only to squeal when she sees her friend Sadie was on the boat. Soon the leave as Lindsay and Katie rides off towards the sunset. Later that night, hiding within the forest was Himiko having just seen everything and like the other she was stunned. God damn Siggy's gonna be so jelly when he hears that I heard the uncensored version of this episode. Emiko said shocked at hearing what Lindsay said about Heather. As she sees Izuku get to bed Emiko couldn't help but smile. Just you wait Izukun. We'll be together soon. Emiko said as she giggles. Chapter 21 Hook, Line, Screamer and Bloody Vampires We find Chris once again at the dock of shame ready to make the intro. Previously on Total Drama Island, campers had to build their own Hot Wheels in a motocross challenge to race for invincibility. There were big winners and big time losers and there was even some wicked off the track motocross stunts but in the end it is Izuku who won invincibility while Katie and Lindsay had to be booted off. Katie for arriving last and Lindsay for using her quirk. Chris said as scenes from the previous episode is shown. Chris smiled as he began to speak again, but not before Lindsay decided to tell Heather off in forcing my boss to pay our editor's extra moolah, which earned her the platinum camper, who will be the next winner, who will be the next loser and more importantly who will renew my contract for next season. Chris said. Daniel raised an eyebrow and spoke. Dude is that last one even a question? Daniel said. Chris blinked realizing that Daniel was right. Okay fair enough. All these mind-probing questions revealed on this episode of, Chris said as he does the last part of the intro. Total. Drama. Island. It was nighttime in Camp Wawanaqua and the campers are watching a slasher flick about a guy with a chainsaw and a hook hand. The reactions are mixed for Duncan he was enjoying it. DJ and Izuku were terrified. Everyone else was indifferent about it. He's coming out of the woods with a big hacking chainsaw. That's so cool. Izzy said with a grin. Oh no psycho killer man's going for the car. Owen said. Yo fool couple stop making out and start the goddamn car. Leshwana said as she tosses some popcorn at the screen. They're gonna be chainsaw sushi. Izzy said with a laugh. Only to slightly pale upon hearing the screams. Oh great Canadian cheese the car won't start. Owen said. Oh man I hate scary movies. DJ said who's scared. Run the psycho is gonna get ya. Izzy said. DJ was covering his eyes. Izuku was also shaking not in fear but in turmoil knowing that he can do nothing. Izuku thought. Oh shit here comes the blood fist. Cody said. Duncan was having a blast as he sees the bloodbath. Oh gross, the chainsaw psycho is going back to the woods. He's getting away. Yeah, good ending. Izzy loves scary movies. Izzy said as she jumps into Owen's arms. Owen looks at her with a fond smile. So does Owen babe. Owen said. Duncan, DJ, Izuku and Cody give the big guys a thumbs up. Phew I am glad that's over. I really hate scary movies. DJ said. Oh yeah what scares you most? The part where everyone meets a grisly death or the psycho killer with a H-H-H-O-O-O-K-K-K. Duncan said as he scares DJ with a prop hook he found. DJ screams in terror. As the other campers save Izuku chuckled at him. Confessional booth. Dude brother was not fucking cool man. DJ shouted as he points at the Kamara. Oh come Deej for a slasher flick it was pretty tame. Cody said. Yeah there wasn't that much hacking, blood and gore. Not like Bloodbath 2, Summer Camp Reign of Terror. Duncan said. Or the pre-quirk films of Halloween, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. Cody said. Oh dude going for the classics. Didn't know you had it in ya. Duncan said with a grin. What can I say there what started the slasher genre of films? Cody said. Oh please it's just mindless guts and gore and before you tell it psychological and that. I want you to look me in the eye and tell me that modern stuff isn't just that. Heather said. Duncan and Cody stayed silent. Confessional booth. I hate to admit it but Heather is right modern day horror movies don't have that same spark. She's still a bitch though. Duncan said. So does anyone have any idea what our next challenge will be this week? Heather asked. Yeah where's the Chris Meister? Jeff said as he ate some popcorn. After Jeff said that the campers heard the sound of a boat motor turning on. Dock of shame. They find Chef was packing up the boat of losers with Chris inside both looking scared. Yo Chef where's the fire? Duncan asked. But the both of them left. As the boat went away, Owen noticed a green bag on the dock. Hey you forgot this. Owen said as a newspaper fell out. Izuku noticed it and picked up the newspaper. Nanny, escaped psycho killer on the loose. Be on the lookout for a man wearing a hockey mask with a hooked hand and wielding a chainsaw. Izuku said as he reads the newspaper. Okay Izuku may be gullible but this. He knew that this is Chris written all over it. Aha he's on the loose. Izzy said. Oh come the fuck on they don't expect us to fall for this shit. A cheap ass slasher flick, a choreographed escape and a lame ass prop. This has challenge written all over it. Heather said. I don't know he looked pretty spooked. DJ said. No Heather is right guys this is something Chris would do. Izuku said. If that's the case why would Chris leave behind his hair gel? Owen said as he hold a Chris McLean brand hair gel. This scares the other campers save for Heather and Izuku. 
So let me get this straight Chris left us for dead and now we're alone while that escaped psycho killer with the chainsaw is on the loose. DJ said, no we're alone while that escaped psycho killer with the chainsaw and a hook is on the loose. Duncan said as he shows the prop hook. Thunk, only to hear the sound of a Q bracelet falling off. The hell, my AQ bracelet. Oh fuck no I am not getting disqualified. Duncan said as his hands shine in a plasma glow. Thunk, 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 thunk. Eight identical sounds were heard all of them being their AQ bracelets being removed. What the hell, Heather said as she goes to her Lamia form. Oh guys I think this is serious. Owen said as he flexes his fingers. Izuku tests out full cal going up to his limit which is 13% percent. Oh no, Izuku said. Attention campers this is Chris McLean as some of you may have already guessed this was supposed to be a challenge. However something unexpected came up. As it turns out there is a real psycho killer with a chainsaw and a hook on the loose on Wewenkwa. With that said there is no challenge this week. Chris said as the campers gasped. Oh what the flying fuck man. DJ who now has a pair of white wings on his back said. Not to worry commander rescue and power dude are on the case. But just in case I'll be releasing you from the bracelets. Until they get the guy. Chris said. That would explain it. Cody said as he holds his hands towards the lake. In a blast of wind shot out form Cody's hands. Yeah it still works. Cody said. With that in mind you lot need to help out the heroes and yes Izuku that means you as well. We do things differently here in Canada. Chris said. Izuku puts his hand down. Now then help out the heroes while do some paperwork. McLean out. Chris said. The campers decide to go to the campfire site to make a plan. Not knowing what was lurking in the dark. Heh, 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 heh. Sometime later campfire site. Well then we need a game plan for we can help. Duncan said. Um wouldn't that be vigilantism? Izuku asked. Now that only applies if we're taking the law into our hands. If we use our quirks to show off we're left with a fine. But if we're using them to defend ourselves or others then it's cool. Cody said. Really? Izuku said surprised at that. Yeah since the people of the Neo One remembered that both Batman and Iron Man are a thing they kept the quirkless version of the vigilante law so that it will be easier to get those types of people. Duncan said. Any quirked version of the vigilante law is not recognized by the Neo One. Leshana said. But anyway we need a plan. Super Dork will tell you about our quirks so that you can make a plan. Duncan said. Izuku nodded as he takes out a notebook from somewhere. Soon he gets to hear their quirks and with it he makes a plan. It's not the best but I think it will work. Izuku said. All right then dudes. Say where's Izzy, Owen and Heather. Jeff asked. I think Heather is getting a facial. Maybe she found enough wolves or coyotes for it. Leshana said. This caused the other campers to chuckle. As for Izzy and Owen. Well if we were still doing the horror movie challenge then those two would be breaking rules one through three. Duncan said. With Izzy and Owen. Izzy and Owen were making out and touching one another completely ignoring the fact that there was a deranged psycho killer with a chainsaw and hook on the loose but they weren't the only one on the loose. Emiko was watching everything go down and she even saw and enjoyed the movie, though she was disappointed that there wasn't more blood and gore. It also didn't help that the bitch was right about the modern horror movies. She sees the couple making and thought that they were super cute. She then frowns as she hears the whir of a chainsaw. Izzy did you hear that? Owen asked. I think that was a chainsaw do you think at the killer? Izzy said. At that moment the killer steps out. Chainsaw and hook ready to kill. Izzy quick question what can your quirk do? Owen said. Oh right my quirk is call fairy. I can shirk, fly and spread itching dust all over her him. Izzy said. Izzy thought. Can you distract him long for me to use my quirk? Owen said. You got it oh Izzy said as she shrunk to the size of a hornet and begins to not only fly but also to spread the itching powder. Expectedly the powder began to make the psycho itch like crazy. Okay Owen just what grandpa told you the heart first then the rest. Owen said as he uses his quirk. As Izzy puts on more powder on the psycho. Owen starts to lose weight. Yo Owen how much long dot 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 her. Izzy said as she comes back to normal as she see Owen. Owen was no longer the lovable fat oaf. Now he's a splitting image of the Giga Chad meme. Tall, filled to the brim with muscles, combed back hair and a goatee. He is still wearing the same clothes. Oh fuck me mama likes. Izzy said as she looks at her man. Thanks Izzy as for what happened this is the result of my quirk fat conversion. Basically I can convert my fat cells into any biological. Blood, plasma, organs and with you saw muscles. Owen said. The psycho with wide eyes looked at Owen. But it was too late as Owen punched him towards the campsite. Making the guy scream for his life. A baby weren't supposed to capture him. Izzy said. Owen blinked then face palmed as he remembers that part. My bad Izzy. Owen said. After saying that in few moments of silence later Izzy spoke. Wanna fuck? Izzy asked. Fuck yeah. Owen said. With that answered Izzy somehow dragged Owen to some large bushes and well you have an idea. Well goddamn I better leave them alone. Emiko said with a blush on her face as she leaves Owen and Izzy in peace. With Chris and the others. Chris was keeping an eye out on the campgrounds with Nko, Iri, Chef and the two pro heroes Commander Rescue and Power Dude. Commander Rescue is dressed in an armored version of a firefighter's uniform. Power Dude on the other hand is wearing a blue and green spandex suit with a golden pea on the center. All of them were looking for the psycho killer. Normally Chris would still do the challenge but his boss reminded him the escaped psycho killers with a chainsaw. 
and a hook isn't covered in the contract meaning the campers could sue him. It was then that Power Dude and the others saw the psycho killer flying out of woods and towards the campsite. Well that happened, Power Dude said as the others nodded. With Jeff and DJ, Jeff and DJ were looking for Heather in order to tell about the plan. You think Heather will take it? DJ asked. I'm sure bro, Jeff said not too worried about it. As the two of them were talking Emiko was watching them hoping they would lead her to Izuku but she did notice that one of DJ's wings was stretched out and pointing at something or rather, at her. Emiko thought. DJ noticed this as well. Oh did my quirk find a sick person again? DJ groaned. When Emiko heard that she unsurprisingly did not take that well. I am not sick I am me. Emiko roared as she leapt towards DJ. Emiko tackled DJ to the ground but DJ managed to hold her down. Emiko struggled as she tries to get free but DJ doesn't let her. Dude she just attacked you brah. Jeff shouted. Do you think I don't fucking know that? DJ said as his wings got closer to Emiko's head. Once the tips of DJ's wings touched Emiko's head. DJ's eyes went wide. Oh fuck me. Yo Jeff you got anything that can calm her down? DJ asked. Even better brah. Alright crazy bitch feel the power of April 20th. Jeff said as he blew a green cloud on Emiko's face. DJ got off as to avoid it and Emiko received the full blast of it. Emiko coughed and gagged at the stuff. She then turned towards DJ ready to kill him until she started acting funny. Hey 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 wow pretty colors. Emiko said before fainting. Yo what happened? DJ asked. I thought the date I said would have tipped you off dude. Jeff said with a smirk. No shot. You have weed breath. DJ said in shock. Yeah though having this quirk suck for two reasons. One I get a major case of the munchies. Jeff said. In the second. DJ asked. I'm pretty much barred from traveling the world. Jeff said. For real bro, I thought cannabis was legal everywhere. DJ said. Nah bro in a lot places yeah but a lot more it's illegal. Jeff said. He felt bad for Jeff. He basically bared from traveling around the world. Expect for places where cannabis was legal. Right now though he had more things to worry about mainly this blonde girl over here. So DJ picked her up and carried her on his shoulder. Cause if he was right she needed blood 15 years ago. With the others, everyone else was keeping their eyes open for the psycho killer. Any sign of him? Izuku asked as Duncan shakes his head. I'm sure we would have found him sooner than later. Leshana said as she eats a brownie. You're right Leshana Sin. Izuku said as he takes a brownie as well. It was then a faint sound was heard. Hey you guys hear that? Duncan asked. Oh, HHH. Oh, -h -h. Psycho screamed as he lands on the ground. The psycho killer. Duncan said as he fires a blast of plasma at him. The blast hits him on the chest and Leshana prepares her quirk. Just get me a few seconds little man. Leshana said as Izuku nods. Izuku fires up full cowling as he charges at the psycho giving him a hard kick. Duncan fires another blast hitting the killer. Izuku also punched the villain towards Leshana. Leshana took the moment to use her quirk. She conjured four giant crystal walls trapping the psycho killer in. Few goddamn that took a lot out of me. Leshana said as she wipes the sweat off of her brow. At that moment everyone else including the pro heroes arrived. Yo what took you all so long? Leshana asked. Well looks like you caught the psycho killer with a chainsaw and a hook. Well done campers also I just received word I used the footage here as an episode. Although sweet, sweet rating. Chris said. Izuku then noticed the unconscious Himiko. With wide eyes and a panicked tone he calls out to DJ. DJ, be careful she's one of the villains I told you about. Izuku shouted worried for DJ's safety. I know but I also that she's suffering from a critical case of blood frenzy. DJ said as he stood his ground. Blood frenzy. Izuku asked. At first he looked at Izuku as if he said something stupid but then remembers that he is Japanese. To put it simply those with blood quirks require to ingest a certain amount of blood or a specialty to function in society. If you don't get it you suffer from blood frenzy. Chris I'm sorry but due to me discovering a case of blood frenzy due to my quirk I need to make a statement to the police. DJ said in a serious tone. Chris surprisingly nodded knowing how serious this was. I know. Chef give the kid a bucket of blood for the trip. Chris said as Chef did just that. I'm sorry guys but I need to go. DJ said. DJ. Izuku said. Don't sweat it super dork he's not in trouble it's due to finding a blood frenzied person he needs to make a statement to the coppers. Duncan said. Sorry that my stay here is cut short but I had a blast being here. DJ said. A group hug. Izzy said as everyone hugged DJ. Soon DJ along with the heroes and Emiko left the island. Now with eight campers remaining the challenging will only get harder from here. With Achako. Oh thank god you're Izuku. Achako said as she sees the end episode. Though it sucked to see DJ leave she knew that he was right. For you see Achako had not been idle since she was eliminated. She had been reading up on the laws and requirement to be a pro hero. She also found out about Blood Frenzy, which made her feel sorry for Toga. She also found many laws that made sense, like a law banning all types of arranged marriages due to them being loopholes for quirk marriages. She now turns off the TV and goes to bed. Dream of her fluffy green-haired cinnamon roll. Chapter 22. Where when Equa gun wild. We find Chris once again at the dock of shame ready to make the intro of the week. Last time on Total Drama Island. We believed that we would have a nice challenge involving Chef Hatchet as a psycho killer. 
Turns out there was a real psycho killer on the loose. But thanks to me releasing the campers from their bracelets, they managed to not only find the dude but catch him as well. Chris said with a chuckle, scenes from last week's episode are shown. But as it turns out, we had ourselves a blood-frenzied stalker on our grounds. One that our resident cinnamon roll was familiar with. DJ found out what was wrong with her and Jeff knocked her out with his quirk. Dude, when read about his quirk, I thought they were pulling my leg when I read his file, but this time I don't mind being wrong. Chris said as he pets a beaver. Ah, Chris, wouldn't that mean you can't use Jeff for the proposed third season? Daniel said. Okay, just for that you're getting your pay docked. But yet you're right. Anyway, due to some legal BS chicken heart, DJ had to leave. Only eight campers remain. Who will win? Who will lose? Chris said as he fed the beaver peanuts. Only for him to get bit. Oh, who will need a rabies shot thanks to this ungrateful little bastard? Find out on this episode of Chris said as he does the last part of the intro. Total. Drama. Island. It was daytime in Camp Wawanequa and we find our campers headed towards the lounge. Owen decides to tap Izzy's back to get her attention. Hey Izzy last night was awesome. Owen said with a grin. Oh fuck yeah it was. Want do it again after the show. Izzy asked. Ah hey what happened with the two of you? Duncan asked. Oh not much but I got a home run with Izzy. Owen said with a shit eating grin. No shot bro. Cody exclaimed while Izzy nodded. Yup and Owen was packing. Izzy said as she laughed perversely. Oh dude really. Jeff groaned. Yup. Izzy said with a massive grin. Then the sound of a rope snapping shut was heard. Izzy looked around and couldn't find Owen. Hey, where's my bag of joy of 136 kilos? Izzy said. Hey I'm only 134. Someone set a trap. Owen said as he dangling upside down. Soon a wooden cage fell on them. Or two. Owen said face now red. Good morning campers or should I say trappers. Ready for today's challenge. Chris said while holding a beaver and a knife. The campers gasp. Excellent then let's chat about it during chow shall we? Chris said as he leaves. Ah oh, he's coming back to untrap us right. Owen asked. Chris threw the knife at rope and getting him down. Only for him to break the cage. Groans of pain were heard as the campers picked themselves up. Camp lounge. Everyone was eating their meals thinking about the challenge. Alrighty campers there are only eight of you left on Total Drama Island and after tonight's dramatic bonfire ceremony only seven of you will remain. We're nearing the end people so look alive. Chris said. Confessional booth. Bbbbzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
Chris said, unless there's an animal trainer and a zebra carcass in there I don't think it will be adequate. This is ridiculous. Heather said as she starts to walk away but not before Chris speaks. I don't think I mentioned the penalty yet. Chris said, I don't care I'll take it. Heather shouted, loser cleans the communal washroom. Chris said, everyone gasped and Heather was frozen. Owen all the while apologized for what he did. All right campers you have just one minute in the boathouse to grab your critter catching gear. Chris said, with that in mind everyone went in the boathouse getting the stuff they needed. Duncan with a chainsaw, Izzy with various items, Owen with paper towels, Jeff with a burlap sack, Cody with duck bait and a fish net, Heather with a regular net, Izuku with a hook and some rope and finally Leshana with with a bucket. Confessional booth. I don't I guess I can win. Don't get me wrong between the food, the bugs and cameras. I can take it but Heather she's a bitch. Let's face it the only reason I would stay here would be for the various millions of dollars they're offering. Cody said. I assume I'm the favorite to win. I mean look who's left. Weird nerd boy. A criminal. A fart machine. A party dude. A psycho hose beast. Leshana and an illegal pro hero wannabe. The only he is going for him is a girlfriend and the fact that he didn't make any enemies whoop to fucking do. We're not here to make friends. We're here to win and that is exactly what I plan on doing. Heather said as she snaps her nail file in half. As the camper leave the boathouse with their items. Izzy was looking through the boxes until she found a tranquilizer gun. Izzy aimed the gun at only for Heather to tell her to aim the other way. All right then is everyone ready? Chris asked. Yes. The camper said. No. Heather shouted. Who cares? Eri released Dekaru. Chris said as Eri nods. Eri then whispered something into Dekaru's ear and the bunny grinned like a madman or bunny in his case. With that said he went on his way. All right then game on. Chris said as the campers left to find their animals. Confessional booth. Okay see Heather is my competition and as much as it makes me want to fucking puke my guts out. I knew I had to get on her good side. Still a bitch though. Duncan said. You can borrow my chainsaw after I'm done. Duncan said. Great the bear can use it to skin me alive after he's finished mauling me thanks. Heather said as she take out a large hook from a box. Well I did pick something up that might help you. Duncan said as he pulls out a pair of fake antlers from the paintball challenge. Why would you want to help me? Heather asked. Because if you team up with me I'll take you to the final two. Duncan offered. Not interested. Heather said as she left. Suit yourself. Duncan said. I usually do. Heather said. She'll be back just wait. Duncan said with a grin. With Cody. Cody was hiding behind a bush while his quarry was eating breadcrumbs. All right ducky let's get this over with. Cody said. The duck takes one look at Cody. Sticks out its tongue and runs off and by runs off I mean it ran as if it was the road runner. The fuck. A confused Cody said. Confessional booth. Is this reality TV show or a Looney Tunes cartoon? Cody said. With Leshana. With fine Leshana near a small swamp where she finds the frog. This is gonna be way too easy. Leshana said as she summons Murphy. Confessional booth. I think I got as good a shot of winning as anyone else and I'm not gonna let anything stand in my way y'all. I've just gotta keep winning invincibility so that bitch Heather can't vote me off. Manipulative pain in my ass been trying to get rid of me for weeks. Leshana said. As Leshana tries to get close to the frog and hops away. This happened multiple times until Leshana somehow sinks into a puddle. Leshana rises from the puddle with the bucket on her head. Yeah Froggy's gonna pay. Leshana said. With Heather. Heather had just managed to capture the bear she was meant to get. With a bit of luck she is now dragging the bear back to camp. Ha ah, the only way this would be better is if I find that damn bunny. Heather said. Hey bitch over here. A deep voice said. Who the fuck said that? Heather said. She turns around to see. Dekaru. Oh this is too perfect. Heather said with a smile. Oh you are going down bitch. Dekaru said as he begins to glow. She sees that Dekaru was growing taller and gaining clothes and a beard. Once the light dies down and putting on a cowboy hat on his head Dekaru speaks again. Now then I'm gonna hit you with so many lefts that you'll be begging for a right. Dekaru said with a grin as he cracked his knuckles. With Duncan. Duncan had managed to find a lone raccoon. Hey buddy, hey little pal. Come on let's go for a walk. Duncan said as he hears something behind him. What was behind him was a nursery of raccoons. All of them angry at Duncan. Oh so that's how it gonna be. I didn't want it to come to this. Duncan said as he takes out his chainsaw. The nursery looked at Duncan's threat and glared at him. All of them combined until they turned into a giant robot. That's more than meets the eye, Duncan said. With Izzy. Izzy was trying to find a deer but was looking at the wrong spot. She also used her tranquilizer gun on Chef. Whoops, Izzy said. Confessional booth. Oh my gosh I should totally win. Okay you know that one time I dressed as a bear and like scared everyone. I was like Rauer and they were like I'll save me. Well if someone else dressed up as a bear and it wasn't me I totally wouldn't have been scared. I would have known which makes me smarter than they are. Oh did I forget to mention that I have an IQ of 188 because I do. 
Izzy said. It's true I read her file and yes she does have an IQ of 188. Pris said as he holds Izzy's file. With Izuku. Izuku was looking for his links. So far he hasn't found it. I see that the obvious solution still eludes everyone. A voice said. Huh. Who said that? Izuku said. Oh for the love of God. Look up. The voice said. Izuku did as such and saw that it was the lynx. The lynx. Izuku said. I go by Reinhardt young man. The now named Reinhardt said. Oh sorry Reinhardt's in. Oh my kind of need you to come with me. Izuku said. Em. I will do for a plate of cooked venison. Rare. Reinhardt said. Oh we have a deal then. Izuku said. Excellent. Now let hurry before that damn duck gets there first. It may be fast but it is not smart. Reinhardt said as he jumps down from the tree and lands on Izuku's arms. Okay Reinhardt. Izuku said. Good thing you got me and not that nursery hive mind. Reinhardt said. With Duncan. Duncan was being chased by Mecha Raccoon fires more raccoons at Duncan where one lands on his head. But this causes the both of them to fall off a cliff. Well at least I got a hold on you. Duncan said as he lets out a groan of pain. With Owen. Owen is climbing a tree where a chipmunk resides. The naturalist is at one with the wild. He is part of it. Making eye contact creates peace, creates brotherhood. We are one little fellow. Yes we are one and you're the only thing standing between me and victory. Still I love you. Owen said. But the chipmunk wasn't having it. So it bit Owen's nose. Causing him to fall down from the tree. Oh. Owen said as he sees the chipmunk using a parachute. Campfire sight. We see Izuku headed towards the cage. When he opens it he puts the links inside. Alright then I did my part now you do yours. Reinhardt said. I will. Hey Chris I'm done. Izuku said. Well hot damn you actually did it. The winner is Izuku. Ready for your dinner. Chris said. Izuku was about to say something when he sees a dust cloud rolling in in Cody's voice. Izuku opened the fucking cage. Cody shouted. Izuku does it in and goes the duck. Cody sighs in relief only to see Izuku's links. You what fuck it at least I'm not the one who has to clean the washroom. Cody said. Our god fucking damn it opened the cage. Duncan said as he rushes towards the cage. Once there he tosses the raccoon inside. Duncan takes a few breaths and looks inside the cage. Oh well at least I don't have to wash Owen's shit fist. Where's Heather? Duncan said. With Jeff. Jeff had managed to find three beavers and despite getting slapped by their tails. He managed to get all three of them. With Izzy. Izzy fires her gun once only this time hitting a horse. Whoops. Izzy said. With Leshana. Leshana had captured her frog. After sinking into another puddle. How you thought you could mess with this sister a froggy. Leshana said. Ribbit. With Izuku and the others. Izuku was enjoying his feast as was the lynx. I must say chef you make one hell of a venison steak. Reinhardt said. As the two feasted on their prizes Jeff came by and placed his three beavers into the cage followed by Leshana and her frog. I don't know about you but I'm gonna get a fucking shower. Leshana said. Chris opened the fucking gate. Owen said as he destroys the food Izuku was eating. Upon entering the gate Owen is surrounded by the other animals and proceed to maul him. Izuku felt a bit bad for Owen as he did ruin his food. But then he heard a scream. <laughs> Heather shouted as she landed on the ground. What the hell? Duncan said. Oh fuck that damned rabbit. Heather said before falling down. A rabbit. Cody said. Soon the group see a rabbit person come out of the woods. Hey there bitch. The rabbit person said. You're going down Dekaru. Heather said. D-K-I-R-U. Everyone but Chris shouted. Yep I may have forgotten to tell that Eri's new rabbit Dekaru is a quirk rabbit. Chris said. Hold up. Oh fuck me sideways I know what his quirk is. Cody shouted. You do Cody what is it? Izuku said. Dekaru answered for him. It's called Chuck Norris. Dekaru said. Dekaru. Quirk name, Chuck Norris. Quirk type, transformation. Quirk description, allows Dekaru to transform into Chuck Norris and gains all of the abilities of Chuck Norris. Both non-fictional and fictional. However upon transforming back into his rabbit form he cannot use the form for six months. Everyone was confused about the chart that had just appeared until a voice spoke up. Sorry my quirk is acting up. An intern said. And alright dude. Chris calls out. Now with that out of the way. Dekaru said as he rushes towards Duncan. Duncan was but had managed to catch both of Dekaru's fist. Ha huh, not so tough now eh? Duncan said with a smirk on his face. Only to have said smirk wiped off his face with an uppercut. Duncan was dazed but saw that the uppercut came from a third fist. Cody spoke up. They say underneath his magnificent beard lies a third fist. Cody said. I would have liked to know earlier nerd. Duncan said. Everyone tried to fight off Dekaru even Izzy who threw a lump of coal at him. Only for Dekaru to catch it and turn it into a diamond. Alright who's next? Dekaru asked. I am you fucking wabbit. Heather said. Heather charged at him and Dekaru decides to do his ultimate move. The roundhouse kick. Oh no oh no oh no 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 no. We'd have fucking stop him now. Cody said terrified. Cody it's just a roundhouse kick. Right. Izuku nervously said. Izuku according to the lore of Chuck Norris. The estimated energy given off by the Big Bang is equivalent to one CNRK. Cody explained. One Chuck Norris roundhouse kick. Izuku said with wide eyes realizing what Cody meant. Just as Dekaru was about to land the roundhouse kick. Daniel jumped in and used his quirk. Daniel, 
Quirk name, bubble trap. Quirk type, emitter. Quirk description. This allows Daniel to trap anything within a basketball-sized bubble made out of energy. Current limits of the bubble are unknown. Sorry, the same intern said. Oh, God damn it. Daniel said struggling with the bubble. As he tries to contain the bubble, Dekaru managed to punch Heather again knocking her out. At least I got to beat the shit out of Heather. Dekaru said as he transforms back into his bunny form and went to Izuku's side. Almost there. I can do this. Plus fucking ultra. Daniel roared as he managed to close the bubble with a mighty clap. In a flash of light the bubble closed and when the light died down it revealed a ball the size of a basketball where an entire universe recited. Confessional booth. I have just witnessed the beginning of everything and it was glorious. Daniel said still at awe of what he did. The nice intern told me that I can keep it. Oh and Dekaru gave me a shiny rock. The reset as she shows both the universe ball and diamond at the camera. Campfire sight. Well I don't think I need to tell you that Izuku is the winner of not only the challenge but also the RV. Chris said as the other campers turned to see Izuku holding Dekaru. God damn it. Duncan said. Hizzy, Heather since both didn't get your animals to their cages. You both lost. Though only one of you will clean the washrooms. Chris said. Fuck. Hizzy said. Heather on the other hand growled. Welp see you guys tonight. Chris said with a grin. A few hours later. Everyone was now at the campfire site ready for their faith. Izuku was once again holding the platinum camper while Heather held the grand cracker of disappointment for nearly destroying the universe. You've all casted your votes and made your decision. When I call your name come up and claim your marshmallow. The camper who does not receive a marshmallow tonight must immediately return to the dock of shame to catch the boat of losers and leave. That means you're out of the contest and you can't come back. Ever, Chris said. The campers nodded. All right, the first marshmallow goes to Jeff, Chris said as Jeff gets the marshmallow. Owen, Leshana, Duncan, Heather, Izuku. One marshmallow, two players. Izzy, Cody, one of you spent your last night on Total Drama Island. That marshmallow goes to Chris said as he pauses for dramatic suspense. Cody, Chris said as he gives the marshmallow to Cody. And well, we've all got to go sometime, right? Izzy said. I'm Miss you, Izzy. Owen said as she kisses Owen. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Izzy said as she throws a smoke bomb and disappears. Heather is the loser, you have to clean the washrooms. Chris said as Heather sneered at Chris. With Izuku. Izuku and the rest of campers were partying in Izuku's new RV and they were loving it. Yo, super dork, wicked party. Duncan said. Izuku smiled. Despite being in this island, he was loving it. With Chris. Chris was smiling, that would mean that some interns are going to die. But Chris was covered with his contracts which covered a lot of things. Pregnancies. That was covered. Death. That was covered. Lawsuits that protested justified eliminations. That was covered too. It now included psycho chainsaw killers with hooks. But this smile oh ho Chris was happy because Daniel thought up of an idea and a solution for next week's challenge. My dude are you related to my boss because that is an awesome idea. Chris said with a smile. Glad to help. Daniel said. Expect a pay raise and promotion my new employee. Chris said. Daniel couldn't help but smile at his promotion. He couldn't wait for next week. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if OFA Deku loved Achako. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Fiream78910 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Deku Fanfic for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.